Hello friends, this is Zods, and some of you know me as a very passionate Dead by Daylight player. I have clocked over 12,000 hours in DVD and started playing in 2017. But today I'm joined by my good friend Cope, whose social links you'll find below. He is even more of a DVD veteran than I am. He started playing, I think, during the beta, so pretty much as soon as it came out, right? And I believe has even more hours than I do. Actually, I only have 10,000, but we're still pretty high up there. Damn. Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't mind. I, it, it, honestly, it starts to be very meaningless once you get into the, what, five digits. And exactly. today, we're going to be ranking all of the release chapters and sub-chapters for Dead by Daylight based on how much of an impact they had on the game. Mostly initially, but also a little bit lingering for the rest of the game's health. We're going to start with the nurse chapter which is the first one that was ever released and will end with the all things wicked unknown chapter is that right i think so are you ready to dig into this i'm totally ready okay so we have a bit of a tier list going on here it's very simple chapters that had a great impact that helped the game's health and longevity and its popularity will go on the green highest tier those are the ones that people remember fondly the ones that are still nice to remember and had a good impact, they will be right below. The chapters that came and went and didn't really have much of an impact either way will be in the middle. There are some chapters that honestly are not just forgettable, but had bad effects in the game as well. That will go into the oof category. Mm -hmm. And the few that really, really struck, stuck out as being really bad for the game that still give us nightmares to this day will be on the bottom. It's that simple. So, starting with The Last Breath, a free chapter that included the Disturbed Ward Asylum map, Nia Carlson with all her perks, and more importantly, the nurse with everything that that brought. Where does this belong? So, in my opinion, the nurse brought, obviously, you know, our current strongest killer, mm -hmm. at least up there, you know, consistently over the years. And Disturbed Ward as a map was one of the first places you could actually use Balance Landing, you know, comfortably. Yeah, the, ba the perk Balance Landing itself came out with this chapter. And we've right. talked about it before, but there were actual infinites that you could pull off because Balance Landing had a passive ability that allowed you to, like, constantly drop and recover really fast. So do you think that gives it a negative impact overall? I mean, Nurse obviously is a bit of a nightmare to balance, but it's also the first chapter and it was free. And right. And it had a lot of hype behind it. And I still stand by in saying that this chapter was game breaking in a good way because of what you just said earlier, which are infinites existing in the game at the time. But the nurse didn't care about them. Oh, and... I see what you mean. So you're basically saying that the nurse was a necessary evil at the time. I am saying that. Oh, wow. That is a controversial take. I mm. personally was not around uh, as you uh, as we will talk about later. Um, I still hadn't played the game. I will come and join the DLCs in a bit. Um, so I wasn't around for the release of this. And what I've seen mostly is the aftermath. And I think the aftermath of this has been terrible. Even back then, uh, like Nurse was incredibly powerful. She had the five or seven blinks. Even after they changed that, we had the Omega Blink Nurse. I have only seen Headache and Headache and Headache. Uh, as a result of this chapter. Not to mention that to this day, this Turb War map is one of the worst designed, most headache-inducing maps in the game. Almost for both sides. For Killer, because it's unbelievably inconsistent and safe. And for Subaru, because it's very difficult to navigate and remember the layout of. It's also very inconsistent sometimes. So I personally really, really dislike the difficult um, balancing decisions that always have to move it around Nurse. I would... I would make all the positives and negatives almost cancel out. What do you think, Hope? You're going with almost no impact then mm, at the end I of the would, day. I would almost put it in the oof. oof I think that okay. if, if this chapter had never released, we would have saved so much headaches. I would place it there. I'll go back to saying again, she's a necessary evil, but I, I do see your points. Her existence, I feel, is... It was like the right band-aid at the time. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, I can't really say for sure, to be honest. Well, I, I can't completely disagree with that 
we can't Oof. we can't just like we we can't forget about the survivor Nia Carson and how obviously you know she's a popular character her perks are okay they've been some of the least problematic at least after the fix right. uh do, do we do we upgrade do we leave it in the oof department I think we leave it in the oof for now all right now we have the Halloween chapter Mm. Now, this is a mixed bag. On the one hand, it's undisputable to say that this chapter might have propelled Duty into the popularity that he has enjoyed ever since, and that without this chapter, it's possible we might have never had any other license, so that's a big deal. But the chapter itself, everything surrounding it was an absolute disaster, and we still feel some of the effects. Is that a fair assessment? It is totally fair. I believe the developers went on holiday around this time, were... Uh, after um, the Halloween chapter was released, no we way. had this machine gun build of Save the Best for Last and Unrelenting, where you could hit someone and instantly recover, pretty much. Yes. And that lasted for quite some time, and broken perks as well. But yeah. to piggyback earlier on your point about, like, this is the first licensed chapter. It brought many new players to the game, and that's just not something that at least I can truly ignore, you know? No, no. But the, the thing about this chapter, uh, we recently made a video where we reacted to the old uh, trailer and talked about each perk. Literally every single perk in this chapter was broken in one way or another and had to be fixed. The map itself was a mess. The characters, oh man, yeah, everything, everything was rough. But the positive impact of having the first license and the hype surrounding this is so unbelievably powerful that i think that alone like if this was a non-licensed chapter i think this would go straight into the disaster or oof but maybe maybe just keeping that in mind do we put it in good or great impact i would say either or because decisive strike although released so many years ago still has a huge impact on the game mm-hmm at the very least yeah let's not forget the other perks like optical obsession being a problem for years they had to create the undetectable status effect because otherwise optical obsession was an insane perk against stealth killers because you could see them through walls so many problems so i think that maybe prevents it from being great impact but uh what about the next chapter of flesh and mud the chapter that oh, introduced boy. hexes as a concept it introduced Noe through the hunt the three hex perks from the hag ace visconti and the swamp maps which are some of the most outdated maps <laughs> What do we think? So for the Hags release, the swamp was like twice as large back then. And I it's think it true. combined both maps. I I'm not totally sure on that. Uh, and the Hag on release was just absolutely horrible. Her setting speed was probably like three times what it is now, give oh, or take. Yeah. yeah, no, you're right. The, she... the, the Hag eventually got a buff that made her pretty serviceable. But that took right. like a couple years. It really did. And yeah. also... I might be wrong when I say this, but after you teleported, you couldn't move for yeah, like Yeah, no, you had no momentum. That I remember very well. You also had a yeah. very small uh, range. You couldn't teleport to any trap that was further than, I believe, 24 meters, which was really, really, really little or something like that. And as you said, the setting speed was like five seconds. It was bad. And the add-ons all had downsides. It was really, really bad. So on release, this definitely was a messy chapter. Uh, what about the other aspects? I mean, I don't know about you, but I think Ace, other than being kind of cute and popular, his perks made... His perks are some of the most forgotten, unused perks ever. Nobody runs open I would say... Um, the luck ones. They're fun. And I think that's good for the game, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But in terms of, like, the more useful perks, Hex Ruin is obviously, obviously there. Well, um, yeah. We didn't even get into that, but Ruin basically, after the chapter came out, became meta for the next, what, years. two or three years? At least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, how do we how do we even rate that? Was that a good thing because it helped the generator balance, or was it a bad thing because it solidified the meta into something boring? What do you what do you make of it? I have a really hot take on this. I believe the Hags release really started kickstarted people, um, Confirming kills and sitting at the hook, you know, hags really? trapping the hook and oh. kind of oh, damn. with their perks and all. Would you say that because there's so many ups but also downs, and it's would you say would you say that this is an almost no impact or a zero sum 
where it, uh, it it brought as many good as uh, as many good as things as bad. Is that a fair assessment, or would you say it's even worse than that? I'd give it an oof. You'd give an oof, <laughs> and I love the hag. That's the funny Damn. thing. Damn. All right, you know, just because back then I was not playing the game, I will trust your authority on this. Uh, soon, as, as sure. soon as the Saw chapter comes out, then I was there for every release afterwards. Um, now, we have Bill's introduction with the Left Behind Paragraph chapter, which only included, obviously, Bill. No map, no killer, but also came with some skins for the original survivors that made them look like Left 4 Dead characters. Um, what do we think of this? Was it good for the game? Bad? Left behind, the perk that is, is absolutely worthless. It was back um, then. Now it's actually pretty okay. I think it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, situational. and That's fine. Borrow time and unbreakable. Um, Unbreakable, I don't think we need to really say much no. about it. It's pretty obvious. But borrow time back then gave the user borrow time and the recipient borrow time as well. Yes. So... Basically, it was a bit like buckle up now where you protected both people. Um, now this was patch eventually. I still play right. with that version of Borrow Time for a long time, so it took them a while to patch that out. But when they patched that out, now at least we had this thing where survivors that came out of a hook were expected not to die immediately because everyone ran Borrow Time. And in the console version of Dead by Daylight, Bill's perks were made common because Bill wasn't there for a while. It took all, it took right. some years for Bill. I think overall the. the if it wasn't for Unbreakable existing, slugging would have been super common for a long time. If it wasn't for Borrowed Time, we would have needed some other character to have it. The fact that we got a free licensed character, I think it's really cool. What is there something preventing this from being great impact? I was actually thinking the same greater good because it, especially Borrowed Time, giving people the like safety to actually be able to play the game after being unhooked and it was such an overused perk in a good way mm -hmm. i think it was honestly great yeah i'm really happy that we have that now as a base kit thing but it, it was okay. necessary back then if they didn't make that base kit keep in mind that back then mori's could work immediately after being unhooked so for those of you that didn't play back then you could be unhooked get immediately hit get immediately down and then get immediately killed which was fun times. it was not fun it was not fun now we move on to the next chapter, The Spark of Madness. We had Larry's, mm. Fung Min, and The Doctor. Wow, uh, where do we place this? Oh boy, The Doctor on release didn't really do anything other he than find useless. survivors. <laughs> yeah. He just didn't do anything. Um, Maybe this is an unpopular opinion, but Larry's is such a, like, kind of annoying place to be at times because... Like, in my head, I have to remember, okay, this door is closed, this door is open, take this way, take that way. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot going on with Larry's itself. It's but... not the peak of design, let's put it that way. No, not at all. Yeah. Uh, Doctors, Burks, I mean, um, all right. One of them gets used fairly often. The other two are pretty forgotten. Fang Min, I would say it's a super popular character. All of her perks are usable or decent or have a place. And right. after they buff alert, which used to be pretty bad, now it's really good and stuff like that. Um, and the doctor himself, as you mentioned, he was terrible. Like, his shock did not deny pallets or windows. Um, he had to switch from normal mode to shocking mode to be able to shock. And then he moved at 110 and he slowed himself down during the transition. And then if you wanted to hit, you had to do it afterwards. It was terrible. It was, it was, he was really, really bad. But I do think that almost everything that came out of this chapter got relatively addressed or, or fixed and overall it brought some good stuff the first indoor map mm, a popular character some okay -ish perks a decent killer that would be really really popular for time to come would we say this had good impact almost no impact or do you lean elsewhere initially i would say almost no impact to oof but currently i would say a good impact Yes, I'm going to change this to neutral. I think that's neutral, more okay. good impact. Okay, so we agree on that. And then we have the Huntress. Huntress chapter. This was a free chapter as well. Came for everybody. Eventually was made part of the game. Came with a map, which was awful. Let's be honest. Uh, but also with a free killer with her three unique perks, which were not very good at the time and are still not very good in general. But the killer herself, the Huntress, 
some people think one of the better design killers in the game and overall a free addition is very welcome what are your thoughts i think she's solid first ranged killer in the game people were looking for something like this and it, it, i'll even go further than that and say that still to this day even though she's had changes time and time again she's one of my favorite killers that they've worked on you know themselves yeah and have released. it's one of the few killers that hasn't changed a lot over the years at least until recently and it was right. fine ish fine ish right now i would say so I would say there is at least one thing that prevents this from being a great impact. And <laughs> are, are we thinking the same thing? Or... Yeah, are we talking about the... Are we going to talk about the iridescent Huntress yes. hatchet that was unfixed for like five years? Yes. Or at least four years. I don't remember if I'm that old. But basically, back then, the Huntress had an instant hatchet add-on, much like she does right now. But you could use add-ons to bring three of them. And everyone did this. And it was... One of the most boring. There was no anti camp back then. There was no, you know, there, there was whatever you can think now that would help you. It didn't exist back then. Basically, you spawned in, she hit you with one hatchet. Oh, she missed. She hit you with another hatchet. Insta down. Game over. It was so unfun and it went unaddressed for so unbelievably long that uh, that, that alone, I'm not joking, I think ruined the experience of a lot of people. Uh, considering that, would, would it be fair to put it in good impact? Or... We didn't even talk about the survivor, though. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Uh, uh, David. David King came <laughs> yeah. with us. Super popular. Uh, oh, you know. no. <laughs> uh, David King had a perk to get extra blood points, which is now reworked. Um, we're going to live forever. A perk that is honestly a meme, no mither. I think of it fondly. And then Dead Heart, which much like Ruin would be meta for the next X amount of years, right? Oof. Yeah. Oh, tell us about that. It's it's never gone anywhere. Dead art back then um gave you distance, right? Mm -hmm. And Yeah. It, it it was your, you know, dead art is dead art. It's it, it's barely changed over the years. It was a must have, still is, you know, in many cases for survivors just to feel safe, if you will. Mm-hmm. Still yeah, well, very back, back then it was just insane. Like I, I have to yeah. say, I know I know that relatively uh, relative to a tier list, Dead Heart is always pretty high up, even now. But back then, this perk, it gave you... You could use it while injured, and it gave you a little dash, right? During this dash, you were invulnerable. The Hunter's Hatches can go through you. You could Dead Heart through traps. You could Dead Heart through shocks. You could Dead Heart through the Doctor Blast to find you. You could Dead Heart through a chainsaw. You could Dead Heart through basically anything. At one point, the, the perk was bugged, and you could even Dead Heart out of the exit gates with a trap. Uh, from the pig and still survive. That heart was so obnoxiously versatile and good. It was ridiculous. Ridiculous. And super, super strong. So yeah, maybe <laughs> another thing that taints this chapter a little bit. Would good impact still be fair? Or yes, neutral? I, I, I love the Huntress. I think she was really great at the time for what she was. Okay. I think that. And, and also, it wasn't paid to win. This was all free. So, I mean. Right. Sure. We then come to the Leatherface chapter. This is a chapter that the developers mm -hmm. themselves uh, admitted was rush. It was more of a paragraph. It didn't come with a map. It didn't come with a survivor. Uh, it only had a killer with barbecue and chili, which gave extra blood points. Big deal. Uh, two other perks that were okay-ish. And a killer that back at the time was actually fairly weak and, and, and a bit weird. He did get reworked some years later to be uh, quite skill expressive and, and a little bit more interesting. But back then, he was a bit weak. He was a bit silly. <laughs> what do we think? I don't think there's much for me to say. I'd put him in a disaster category, to be honest. Disaster? I mean, I, I feel uh, like... Other than barbecue and chili was so prevalent back then. Mm -hmm. But we could... he made people really want to be in the basement and obviously, you know, kind of camp them out and... Oh. It's like you said, he just released on his own and he's yeah. just... Yeah, that's true. Back then, you would have people with Insidious just camp the basement. And this went on for years. This yeah. only really stopped a little bit with the introduction of, obviously, the anti-camp system, anti-face camp system, and so on. Yeah, it was really unfun to play against that type of Leatherface, which lasted for years. I have to say, though, I think Barbecue was a healthy, strong perk that encouraged a lot of people to play in more fun ways. Right. I like that. It's also fun to use. And I have to say that 
most of the bad things about the chapter did not reverberate into the game for years and years. There was any one perk that was super broken or super horrible or super anything. I, I think that alone would probably save it from the disaster qualifier. Do you have, are you remembering something else that I'm not? Because I think when I think of the disaster, I think the chapters that were broken at the time and we're still feeling to this day. I completely agree, especially with barbecue and chili. We really needed something like that back then. And mm -hmm. that's what the chapter brought as well. Like people wouldn't take that perk off for years. <laughs> no. Okay. So good. Um, another chapter that was definitely a bit rush, and you can even tell that the Quentin and Freddy models share the same skeleton and, and skin to a degree. Nightmare on Elm Street. How do we feel about this one? Oh, boy. So on release... Oh, where do we start? Freddy was just such a weird killer. You took seven seconds to put someone to sleep. And yes. then they like what laughed at you, teabagged you, or whatever. Who knows? <laughs> so yeah, Freddy, then, Freddy couldn't hit you, right? And you had to wake up to avoid that. Yeah, it was it was so weird. And then I believe outside of a certain range, you could see this survivor's aura. I believe mm -hmm. it was. Mm -hmm. So which made him very good for slugging, for example. And again, he was just really weird. I don't know what other word to use, as well as the map that came along. Yeah. Yeah, and I bad him. You'll probably say way more than that uh, yeah. about that than I will. Yeah, what, what I remember is that Freddy on release was unintuitive for newer players because they didn't understand that their aura was revealed. There's no other killer since or before who, who can see auras without any kind of add-on or anything. So this was really confusing. Uh, he was simultaneously really bad, but also really difficult to play against sometimes and really confusing. So the developers, while trying to balance it, did a lot of 180s and up and down over the course of the next few years. He went from being too strong to being laughable, to being buffed and being one of the top killers, to being nerfed and dropping right back to the bottom, just because here some adjustments are the worst here and there. And as you said, the, the Badham map on release was garbage, on rework was still garbage, and for some reason we have five versions of it, each one being more insulting than the last. <laughs> it is really, really bad. Uh, Quentin was really ugly now he's a little bit cuter the the perks on both sides i would say are fun and especially yeah. bloat warden has probably given us a lot of fun and clips over the years so that wasn't too bad anything else positive to say quentin released with my favorite perk which was at the time pharmacy mm -hmm. uh, yeah before like um broken became so common and like deep wound and everything i loved it and med kits were changed at a certain point i loved pharmacy just to find my green med kit and that was super nice yeah can you explain why green med kits were better before and why it made a difference if i'm not mistaken um the change to the med kits made them all um pretty much have the same charges right yeah. and just different speeds but yeah. finding a green med kit back in the day i could get two heals out of it but now i just get one fast heal and i'm like okay you know if the killer doesn't bring some kind of broken add-on or what have you mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a very quick quick way to heal yourself because medkits back then were very strong even without any add-ons. So yeah, uh, that obviously changed. Do we... Like, it seems to me like this lines up with the other oof chapters. Is that a fair assessment? I think it is. Batam is such a uninspiring map to me, I guess. Is that the word I'd use? Uninspiring. And there are five versions of it. It's just... Yeah, that, that came a bit later, the five versions, but still, off a map, has a lot of exploits, has been, like, not only is it unbalanced, it's generally unfun. Like, if you go down in a certain place, killer literally cannot hook you, and this has been used right. and abused for by people for years. Uh, it's also really unfun, where you have to deal with, with like, a, a hook that's in the middle of the open, and there's no counterplay. Like, it, it just at least it lends itself to unfun gameplay on both sides. Um, and it's obviously incredibly survivor sided for a lot of the weaker killers. Terrible, 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 terrible. I'm trying to think of anything else that was positive, but yeah, overall a pretty oof chapter. Still not quite disaster though. The saw now we're chapter. Up to where you started playing the game. Yes. Um, this was the first chapter that I was already playing the game quite a bit by the time it came out. So from here on out, I was there. I remember not just the legacy, but also the original impact. The Saw chapter was leaked a little bit before it released, 
And when I saw it, I'm like, dude, that has to be made up. But if it wasn't made up, that would be cool. It was true. It was a pretty hype chapter for me. I, I got really excited. I think it solidified my love for this game. Do you feel similar? Do you, do, you, do you think it did this for a lot of other people or am I alone? I, I believe so. I believe the slot chapter brought so many people to the game. A lot of my friends I speak to, I'm, I ask the question, you know, how did you start playing Dead by Daylight? A lot of them just say, oh yeah, the Salt chapter. And personally, I love the franchise of Salt, so I was super hyped for it. And... Yeah. Uh, what to say about the characters? None of them stand out massively. Sure, there might have been some issues or some things here and there, some not extremely polished edges, but the paper is mostly fine. Has never been uh, anything but the butt of some jokes. Uh, Tab and his perks were mostly fine, not too broken, which is a lot to say compared to some other chapters at the time. The right. map on release was way less navigable and for years was the most killer side of map in the game. Then they made up um, for that by adding like a truck worth of pallets. And now it's a bit more unpleasant, even though it's still a bit, a bit of a weird in their map. But overall, I think not too bad. I would criticize the pigs perks, at least a little bit surveillance. Mm -hmm. I, I, At the time is like, I like okay, it. it's okay. Yeah. Hangman's trick is that one again. Be. Okay, I guess. Garbage. Make your choices. All right, it, it's just very all right to me. Very middle it, of the pack, it, I guess. Like, okay, I, I hear you, but compare to the absolute calamity that were some of the other perks released at the time, I think this is yeah. honestly okay. Like. Like, these perks were all mostly usable. Every one of Tab's perk, perks is usable and has synergies. Uh, all of the Pig's perks are usable and have some synergies. Um, I agree, though, Hangman's trick was a bit weird. Back then, it made the the hooks that you sacrifice someone and come back. And it was an anti-Sabo perk. Like, it's got many ups and downs, but I think on release, even, it was okay. Oh, I have to say, no, 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 hold up. I don't know if you remember this, but surveillance on release was actually one of the worst perks in the game. Is that what you were talking about? Or are you thinking of the new? Because the new, the current surveillance is really good. But on release surveillance had one of the stupidest perk designs of all time. Do you want me to refresh your memory? Please. Okay, so if you kick the gen for the next 16 seconds, it would turn white if someone touched it. For the next 16 seconds or something like that. It also turned white after the 16 seconds. Or, or rather, it turned red and then it turned back to white. Basically, it gave you the it it, it told you if someone touched the gen, but it also switched colors anyway, so it was really hard to tell. And it affected up to three generators, but obviously, in the span of like fifteen seconds, you couldn't kick three generators ever. So that was completely pointless. It was a really weird perk. Eventually, they did change it to what we have now, and I think it's a pretty okay perk. But the, the, the biggest impact of the Saw chapter was, as you said, the, the fact that it was a big license. Right. And, and that, I think, gives it a pretty positive... Um, like, compared to all the other licenses, right? Like, look at the other licenses. Other than maybe this one. Uh, they, they, they all came with some broken or non-functional. This one was fairly functional. And playing this at the time, I think, was, was a really good time. Um, could okay. this be... I agree with that. Where, where does this go then? I would personally call it a good impact because of the very last part that you said. It could have been very problematic, but it just, like, it gets worse than that. It was just fine, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Yeah, I guess. Like, if, especially if we compare it to others. Now we have a non licensed character, an original character, Kay Denson, the clown, and the, um, and the chapel map, which all came on this, the curtain call DLC. Uh, what's, I what's this your this chapter very high regard, actually. Yeah, what's your it, first impression? This chapter brought along, if I'm not totally wrong here, I don't think so, brought the store out, which finally gave us cosmetics, like more cosmetics for survivors that we can actually purchase. Oh, you're right. So that was my favorite part of this chapter. Oh, I And then everything else that comes along with it is... I didn't remember that. Well, I don't know if we bundled that into the chapter, but uh, can you explain to people how you even got skins before this store? Yeah, because the store wasn't always in the game. Like, you, you couldn't just go and, and, and buy or select cosmetics. How do you unlock them back then? 
unfortunately back then you had to either be a part of the few events that went on or you had to purchase skins through some like third party like ebay or something i guess yeah you wanted like a rare skin or you purchased uh, skins through what uh, behavior had, like the few packs that they had, like the charity case, for example. Outside of that, yeah. we didn't really have that many yeah, cosmetics. So you bought like a, like a five buck pack of like 20 cosmetics for the base characters. So basically everyone looked default or everyone looked prestige. And then a few people had those cosmetics. But after that, each character started getting their own recolors and stuff. And that was really, really good. And it, it really, it really kind of pulled at the game's appeal for a lot of people so wow that's a good point i also have to have, say oh go ahead do we have much to say about the clown at all on release i mean uh, on release the clown was an absolute <laughs> disaster of a killer his power slowed him down so much on use that basically the speed boost uh the the, the speed debuff that you gave to survivors was completely offset by your own uh waste of of speed it was really really bad um but it was corrected over time he was slowly buffed over time um he was a killer that was a little bit different back then he only had purple bottles keep in mind right. and i will say something positive the perks that came with this chapter would wind up to be some of the most iconic and necessary perks for the game's health we have windows opportunity which is right now the number one most oh, beginner yeah. friendly perk we had pop goes the weasel which is one of the healthiest form of slowdown that we had at the time uh on release it wasn't quite as strong but then it got buffed and then Bamboozle, which I also think would be really hard to imagine a world without Bamboozle right now for a lot of killers that have chainsaws and so on. So I think perk-wise, this, this was a good time. And the map itself has some issues, but it was one of the least gross maps that they did back then. Is that fair? That's fair. And I want to quickly go over Windows of Opportunity because you mentioned Pop Goes the Weasel. Those two perks on release weren't the greatest in the world. I think mm -hmm. Pop Goes the Weasel was 25 seconds, maybe. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was, um, the duration and strength was adjusted. What I remember is that it went from 30 seconds to a minute, and then it was super popular, and then they nerfed it back to 45 seconds, and that was okay. And the perk has been decent or, or really, really good ever since. Windows Opportunity had a cooldown and less range. That's why it wasn't so popular. It was, it was not as useful back then. Um, but, but, you know, after the buff, obviously, now it's a really, really solid perk. Right. So, yeah. Um, but, how does this feel to you, then? How does it feel to you? Um, what your opinion? Uh, listen, listen. Good, good legacy. Good character. But also doesn't strike me as, oh, this made DVD. Oh, I started playing. Oh, man, I think about the clown days. Oh, my clown main era. People <laughs> hated the clown. The clown had an insta down atom that allowed him to have five bottles. They had yeah. to nerf that five, like four <laughs> times, I think, and they still haven't reworked it. Uh, a lot of issues um, on that front, I think. Also, boil over, not very good on release. Eventually, became a bit of a problem for one patch or two. I I don't have all the best memories, so because it's not a perfect chapter with everything good and the greatest possible uh, legacy, I will keep it in good impact. I think that's fair, right? That's where I was leaning to, actually. Oh, no. Next up, Shattered Bloodline, the spirit chapter. Ooh. Came with Adam, uh, Deliverance, Autodidact, and what's his other perk? <laughs> I forgot. Can you, can you remember? My brain is not working right now. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Uh, and the spirit with her perks, including the Yamaoka family residence map. Uh, how quick did you home watchers remember Adam's last perk? What is it? It is, come on. Delhi, Autodidact, what is it? Come on. Deliverance, Autodidact. A pebble. It's the pebble. Oh, this, of yeah, course. Yeah. I mean, that perk is funny. We, yeah. all, we all appreciated that back argue. in the time. Everyone loves that perk, even if it's a bit silly. I would argue one of the best perks they've released. <laughs> For so the fun far. factor, maybe. Not not doesn't have a lot of gameplay attached nah. to it, but yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, a spirit on release was definitely quite messy. It was a bit like Blight, where yeah, she had all the things to make her strong, but there were some technical limitations, right? Uh, on release and on the PTV, I remember she was very buggy. Survivors could hear exactly where she was. 
But soon after, these things got fixed, and what we had was an incredibly powerful killer that was honestly quite busted. Several bugged add-ons that were stronger than they should be. Um, the ability to bump into survivors while she was invisible. Um, the ability to hear all the injured survivors with the perk um, Strider. So there was no real counterplay, even if you ran out on Whale back in the day. Uh, some, I, again, let me reiterate, some absolutely busted add-ons. Uh, not to mention the fact that she also had good synergy with Noid and other Instadam perks and, and so on. The, 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 this killer was incredibly obnoxious. And even though nowadays she's a lot more manageable and she's been reworked and there's more counterplay and there's the audio cues, she's still a bit of a nightmare in terms of accessibility. She is a hotly debated killer in the community of DBD that doesn't hear very well, you know, hard of hearing folks and stuff, because the counterplay is very difficult for them. So I do think she introduced a few problems. She also introduced the idea of trap hex totems, totems that are right. actually negative for the survivors to cleanse, right? Um, and a lot more other, and, and also the rancor, like, yeah, a lot of stuff introduced by, by this killer, not all of it positive. I'm a bit torn. What do you think? I, I don't even know how to be positive after hearing all that, to be <laughs> honest. Um... You said everything perfectly, like annoying add-ons, you know, prayer beads, for example. Oh, you want to walk us how the, Oh, you want to walk us how, uh, through how that felt? I don't completely remember, and it's probably for the best, but I remember you just, like, were so unaware, and then you'd be grabbed out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, off of generators and totems. Yeah, you, you could basically be minding your own business, and without any sound or cue, the spirit would appear right next to you. Her power was completely silent. She made no sound cues or visual cues. So, basically, you could just be doing your your gen, and then, whoop, get grabbed, get put on the hook. And obviously, Maury's back then. You could die within three seconds afterwards. So, yeah, very, very broken killer. Would you say this was a, a, a disaster-level event? Because I don't think it was that bad. The map was okay-ish. The the, the 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 survivor and the killer, the appearance was quite iconic. It probably also helped to market this game in Japan, I suppose. And and help with representation, even though some people, you know, might have some reservations about the appearance of the spirit. Right. Um But would you what would you place it? I would say playing is the spirit. At least felt like I was kind of um doing a little bit different but not very different from like i don't know still like being slightly similar to like the wraith or something so i i do enjoy the spirit like as a killer like i really do actually like her but other than i'd say deliverance being a thing and diversion for example autodad act is fun too I i'm not too keen on this chapter all right. Would you say it was bad enough to put it in disaster? Because I wouldn't say so. I would say maybe neutral or oof. Maybe even lean towards neutral. Oh, neutral. Okay. I really like that on Sparks. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> we might have oh, our disaster. first disaster level chapter. Darkness Among Us. Among Us. Among AKA us. the Legion chapter. It introduced Ormond, Jeff and his perks, and the four members of the Legion. And a lot of trouble. Uh, can, we can, can start we, with a positive. Uh, can, can we just put it in disaster already? We agree with that, right? And we explain why. Well, Aftercare, I think, is a really underrated perk. I think it's uh, amazing, but... Yeah. I think it stops there, really. Copium, yeah. No, I mean... Right now, Ormond is actually a fairly enjoyable map for a lot of people. Some people really like it. So you might look at this. And, and Legion right now is a fairly reformed killer that a lot of people like to play as, are right? We, but are we talking about the release? Yeah, exactly. Or the, yeah, exactly. Okay. What I'm trying to say is that luckily, luckily, this chapter has managed to uh, redeem itself over time. But almost everything that came with this chapter, almost everything, was so broken and led to so really many was. years of waiting for changes to happen. Almost everything had to be changed. The Legion on release was 110 killer. That was honestly, objectively garbage at downing a survivor normally, but that had some methods that could make people bleed out during chase. So basically, after being hit by the power, you just bleed out. 
It wasn't S tier, but it was S tier annoying. It was uh, the most. It was the least interactive like thing I've ever seen in this game. A lot. Being of, a part a lot of, of people absolutely despised it and probably quit over this. They really did. Yeah, the perks so on both sides. They had you know aftercare. It's okay. This codon is okay. But we also had some perks that were honestly not that insane. We have Mad Good, which I guess has been fun for the memes and you know the one perk that um, Hunter's mains like Iron Maiden, but nothing super. No, nothing super broken in terms of gameplay there, as far as I remember. But the map itself, Ormond on release. Oh boy, oh boy. Imagine the current Ormond, but instead of having like, uh, what, three or four jungle gyms, imagine it had like seven. There was so much going on with it. Also, I'd like to criticize Ormond as a whole since it's been released. I don't know if you can relate to this at all or if anybody can, all, can at all. The scratch marks on Ormond are so hard for me to see. I'm just like, why yeah. are they so scuffed? I don't, I, I don't, yeah. okay. No, 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 you're, you're absolutely right. Also, if you play as the, there, there's, all, I think there's other accessibility problems as well. If you play as the, um, as the dredge, you know how in Nightfall everything becomes white? Yeah. You constantly see white on white and it's super annoying. Yeah, Ormond is a bit of a problem in terms of like, even despite the rework, it's still a problem in terms of like seeing things and tracking it's it's always been a bit of an issue but from a balance standpoint it used to be such a terribly designed map with it, everything was wrong with it. it was too big it was too safe the gents were too spread uh, like everything 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 was awful i think everything. it used to have um like the little the little loop that spawns on auto haven as well you go up and you vault down and there's a pallet around it it had like a couple of those i believe oh um you mean you mean like the <sighs> Like the crane? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It had a version of it that was removed almost immediately. I, if you see some old pictures, it had a similar one. Now we have the the snow pie, the snow plier, the snow plower, the orange thing. But yeah, no, it, it had something mm. like that. Uh, those things are were eventually like taken out of the map. I don't know why. But yeah, it had some interesting uh, things about it. But overall, it was a really, really badly designed map. And yeah, the lesion was such a disaster. They had to rework the lesion several times. To get them right, thankfully now they are pretty okay. So I can yeah. say one more good thing about this chapter. Okay. The Legion, they have great skins. Eventually, yeah. No, eventually yeah, you're yeah. you're right. No, and a lot of people <laughs> like it. Would you say that this redeems because this chapter redeemed itself? Would you say that it maybe avoids a disaster qualification, or is that too kind? No, no, it was too bad at the time. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right fair 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 uh let's then move on to the mice of the faithful aka the chapter that brought jen romero uh adiris the plague and the temple of purgation map which used to be a bit bigger and a bit rougher but hasn't changed all that much otherwise uh what do we place this one where do i start um gosh the map i think is a little the basement is a little weird, kind of. Mm, yeah, yeah. No, I really again, not it. the yeah, not not the peak of design, but. No. There's there's worse ones. We can say that. Not yeah. the worst. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, this map was ugly and was a bit inconsistent. From what I remember, before they reworked it, it could have anywhere from very little safety to a lot of safety and a lot of really good fillers. And depending on where the basement was, it, it could be really, really game changing. And it was a bit too big. They changed that, thankfully. Um, but then, looking at the perks, we have some really iconic ones. Head On was introduced yeah. with this chapter, which I think was a great addition to the game. Uh, Corrupt Intervention was an absolute lifesaver and probably the most important perk that they had added since Ruin. So, yeah, that was a pretty big deal. Uh, Infectious, I didn't think was terrible at the time. Darkness, uh, d Dark Devotion was okay. Uh, the Plague was one of the few killers they released that, while being really strong, wasn't incredibly broken or, you know, it was she wasn't incredibly OP or incredibly useless, uh, even though they would buff her sometime later. You really love her, don't you, actually? Um, I think I started loving her when they changed her. Back then, the Plague didn't have one default uh, fountain, so people always cleansed. Oh, sorry, people never cleansed against her. She was a bit of an M1 character. No. And she was very clunky. But then they buffed her by making one default pool already be converted. That makes not cleansing kind of risky. 
and also she feels a lot more smooth. So yeah, she's actually one of my favorites. Uh, I think has good designs. Was the first killer to speak. Um, I, I think overall this chapter was really really good for the game. Not maybe yes. the most iconic and 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 easy to remember because it's original characters, but especially I'd say for corrupt intervention and head on head on being if not the best survivor perk, you know, to date right now, it's super fun. It's not worthless. And I always look for that, like with any perk that they release. Yeah. So we at least have. And it that. changed the way you play the game sometimes. Like it gives you a, dis a, a decent alternative strategy. And it was the first exhaustion perk to not necessarily give you speed. Um, right. I like that. I think, I think it was great. I, I have to say, good impact. You're making me really like this chapter, actually. Yeah, no, this chapter was good. Like, I mean, <laughs> We can also talk about some things that are not that insanely fun um, that came around with this chapter. Uh, the map itself, as I said, on its original inception was pretty bad. Corrupt Intervention was so good. It dominated the meta for years to come. You could play against... Like, back then, the perk didn't go away if someone went down. So you could play against a nurse that downed you within 20 seconds. And she only had to worry about four gens. With, like, ruin, cor like cor running Corrupt and Ruin was so powerful. Oh man, like, like you could argue some of those rough edges. Maybe that's what prevents this chapter from being a slam dump, a uh, great impact. But I think otherwise is pretty solid. Do we find agreement? Actually, there? agree. Yeah. Oh no. Hmm. Ash versus the Evil Dead. This is a paragraph that only included one survivor. No map. No killer. Just Ash. He's three perks and some cosmetics. So may as well just say one perk also. <laughs> One important perk, sorry. Yes, yes. Which perk is that? Medal of Man. What did this perk do? If you got hit by a basic attack, what was it, two or three times? Three I, times. I three times. Okay. Then you got endurance for the next hit, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, and it didn't go know, away. You just kept it. So basically, uh, like imagine you play against your average killer, right? You take a hit. Okay. You take a hit. Okay. Now you get another hook. Now you heal. Now you take another hit, and now you have a fourth hit that will never down you. So you isn't basically it really. Uh, sorry, isn't it really interesting how it both brought like such a controversial and very good perk, and then the most useless perk at the same time? What was the most useless perk? Ah, buckle, buckle up. up! Oh my god, release buckle up! You want to remind us what that did? Didn't it just show you how much someone recovered? Oh yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had a subscribe uh, a subscriber off stream. That's so sweet. Thank you, M374. Yeah, basically, whenever a survivor was down, you would see how recovered they were based on the intensity of their aura. So they would be closer to white if they were fully recovered. The thing is, when a survivor goes on the ground, nowadays this wouldn't be necessary because we have the on-screen indicator, right? The hot element. All right. But back then, you didn't see how recovered someone was. But... It didn't take a genius to know. If a survivor had been on the ground for 30 seconds, they were fully recovered. If a survivor had been moving the whole time, or if they just got down, they obviously weren't fully recovered. So this perk gave you an information that was completely useless, even for solo players. So yeah, that perk was terrible and remained terrible for the next, what, four years or something? Yeah, until very recently. Yeah, until very, very recently. So yeah, it was absolute garbage. And then we have and flip flop, which was okay, didn't stand out I think a lot. Flip flop's fun. Yeah, yeah. Flip I want to okay. criticize really quick. I want to criticize one thing: mm -hmm. paying money for like, and a lot of people did this. They paid money just to have access to Ash for Medal of Man. It just seemed a little kind of bad. It, lack it, of a it, better it word. felt like a pay to win. You you saw, I'm sure, in your lobbies that everybody ran this right for like a week yeah. or two until it got super nerfed. Because it, the perk was busted. Funnily enough, it didn't work against Nurse or Billy, some of the strongest killers at the time, or Hunters. So basically, if you play one of the strongest killers, you are fine. If you play one of the other weaker killers that had to hit survivors normally, this perk basically gave them a free fourth health state. How often they... did you see it? What? How often did you see it in your lobbies? Uh, it was no, it was, it was incredibly ubiquitous. Like you would see it, like you would play a lobby for like a week. And three out of four people would run it. If not four out of four, it was that good. And obviously, everyone wanted to jump on the train. It was right. it was disgusting. Um, we we could also talk about the fact that even though this was the first survivor to have some voice lines, some people think the the 
they didn't do a great job with the model. Because if you look at the Evil Dead game, Bruce Campbell looks beautiful in that game. He looks wonderful. Yeah. In this game, he looks absolutely goofy as heck. And he does. very comical. <laughs> I have some screenshots I can share with you where his eyes are popping off like ballooned. Uh, I don't know if the don't... actor loved that. I don't mind his goofiness, but <laughs> that's just me. Yeah, that's fair. Um, what do we call this? I wouldn't say it's a disaster because it was so contained to just a week or two until they nerfed it. I don't think we had negative repercussions for a long time after, but it was I would... really bad. Oh, man. Um, it, it's tough because I love Flip Flop. I always have. I've always thought Flip Flop has been a really fun and niche perk, but... Medal of Man encouraged people to buy the chapter pretty much, and I I can't completely back that, and then Buckle Up is, was absolutely worthless, so for me, it would be a bit of an oof. Alright, I think that's fair. If they had left that unaddressed for longer, I think that would have been disaster territory. Would that be fair to say? I think that would be fair. I think so. Right, next up, Ghostface. Now, Ghostface release was one of the rockiest ones. Uh, he got leaked accidentally. The developers mm. accidentally fat fingered some button and he was pushed out on Steam and people could download and play with him uh, on some branch testing version of the game. So the surprise was completely ruined. And on the PTB, he was possibly the worst killer I've ever seen in this game. He was pathetic. Oh my God. <laughs> you you remember that? He got instant revealed. Uh, he he had to hold the stalk button mid-chase to keep the, 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 the instant... It was super weird, super weird. But then, for release, they mostly fixed it. And he came out as a paragraph without a map and without a survivor, but with his three perks that were a little bit weaker at the time. Uh, and yeah, sometime after this, not in release, but sometime after, they finally made stealth a status effect. Because on release, this killer uh, could be seen by o Object of Obsession. Basically, even if you were undetectable and you had a zero terabyte, people could just use a key to see you. So that was terrible. But they fixed that eventually after this. So you could maybe bundle that with this chapter. Uh, how do we feel about it? I don't think Ghostface personally brought anything new to the game as he stalks not the same way that Michael Myers does, but like that's what I'd criticize first. And something like way more important is that his reveal just always felt inconsistent for a while to me. I'm not even sure if dedicated servers were out at the time. Maybe that was a. Oh, I oh. might be misremembering. No, no, no. Uh, we didn't have dedicated servers at the time, and I remember this okay. because it was easier to play this killer without dedicated servers because the leaning was more consistent. So no, this was before dedicated servers came. Uh, dedicated servers, I think, came maybe sometime after this. Uh, does. I want to I want to leave this to your opinion. I don't really know what to say about right. Ghostface. Um, let's let's think. No map. Okay. No survivors. All right. Uh, the perks themselves. For years, Amaliers has been ex extremely mediocre. Thrilling Tremors has been okay, and Furtive Chase was another perk that was useless for like four or five years until they finally did something to it. So the perks I think had very little impact. Almost any one of them could be replaced by other perks. Like not not none of them really stood out. So I think it's all about the gameplay of Ghostface and the appeal of a big uh, license. I think Ghostface for many years was one of the most popular killers in the game. It was yeah. also relatively beginner friendly. A lot of people got started playing this uh, this game playing Ghostface. You could play him at you know high level, go stealth and do this, but you could also play him in a very simple, ah, oh, just stab things. Um, he was definitely a bit weaker back then. He's been buffed many times since. But overall, I think just just the quality of the license and the adaptation, I think, are really good. Keep in mind that this Ghostface is not exactly the Ghostface from the films. It's like a... It's their own unique take on Ghostface, right? This Ghostface is better than any of the Ghostfaces in the film in terms of design, lore, I'd say, and everything else. So I really, really like the president of this set. And if I had to... If it was up to me, I don't think I'd put it in great impact, but I'd put it at least in good impact. What do you think? I think good impact also to piggyback on an, an, another earlier point that you made beginner friendly. You don't have to be some like insane ghost face player just to go into night shroud and mm -hmm. just go up to people and hit them or grab them perhaps. 
or teabag them, which is the, one of the first yeah. killers that could do it fast. <laughs> True. Yeah. Uh, do we put it in good impact then? I believe so. Yeah. Oh, dun, 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 dun. The Stranger Things chapter originally came, disappeared after some weird copyright thing, and he's now back in the game after a while. How do we feel about this chapter? He brought Hawkins, the Demogorgon, first time ever, two survivors in one chapter. It was a bit more expensive. Six new perks. Uh, how do we feel about it? I think this chapter is amazing because I hated the map at first, but then I grew to love the map in its absence. Like you said, it was taken away. Mm -hmm. I think the Demogorgon is in, it, it, on release. I don't believe you could shred pallets without an add-on. On the PTB, but on release you could. Okay. I think. Yeah, on the PTB, you needed an iridescent to break pallets, but then they realized, okay, maybe this should be base kit, and then they changed it for release, I think. I like the idea of traversing the map. That's always nice. Mm -hmm. Um, The survivors, like you said, they actually have their own unique perks and two at a time. And and, and we had some good perks with the survivors, so I think about yeah. it. Uh, an anti-camping perk, which was hard to use for solos, but still very welcome. A perk to heal when you heal someone else. A perk to heal by doing totems, but that is also you know, inner healing, but it's also limited by the fact that there's a limited amount of totems, so it can't ever be OP. Uh, a perk to see your own scratch marks and walk faster, which after they buffed it was great for beginners and veterans alike, fixated. Dude, this, like, on the killer side, Fearmonger was, or Mindbreaker was really bad, but after they buffed it, solid perk. Surge, after they buffed it, solid perk. Right. Uh, and even um, Claustrophobia, after they buffed it, usable perk. Almost everything in the chapter, from a mechanical gameplay perspective, was either good or got fixed to be decent. I think you meant to say Cruel Limits just then? Uh, that yeah, it? Cruel Limits Claustrophobia okay. was the name that they gave it while, oh, while it man. was a common perk. But yeah, uh, then when the chapter was gone, these perks that we just said are very good. They became free perks to everyone. So you picked up the, the game and you already had Search or Jolt. Uh, as a free perk, which I think was really good because for many years, many beginners had good perks for free. So I think that was an indirect blessing. And adding to Hawkins, I, I know many people didn't love the map, but one thing about Hawkins that was really nice compared to other indoor maps is that it was very consistent. Like right. You could learn it. You could learn the map and play it and the layout changed a little bit, but it, yeah, it wasn't like the disaster that, that you could have in Larry's where every room felt like it was completely unknowable until you enter that, right? I'd like to add two things, actually. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think um, Hawkins is a very unique map. There's no map like it to me. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it it can't really be replicated much, like, with going upstairs and the way that some of the pallets are played out. It, it's just really nice to me, like you said, unlike, I guess, Larry's, for example. Mm -hmm. And also, Stranger Things is super popular and it brought a lot of new players we, to we the game. We didn't even with... talk about that. We were just judging as, as if this was a, an original chapter, but it wasn't. It was the biggest license since Halloween or even bigger than Halloween. This was huge for the game. Massive. Massive. And so far I've been placing, I haven't been placing them in any particular order, but I think this would just automatically get shifted. I to, agree completely. To, to the left. Goodness gracious, that was... It's very big. healthy to bring new players to the game, and they did great with it. The, the, the hype around the time of the release of this chapter and the reveal, it wasn't spoiled. It wasn't leaked, I think, at least too early. Like, it was it was a great time to play DVD. Very, very good stuff. Agreed. Uh, shortly after, we had Cursed Legacy, the first chapter that would follow up on the lore of an existing uh, one, because, you know, the spirit and the only are related. It brought some decent perks on both sides-ish. A, a new map that was honestly fairly inoffensive, not super busted for either side, not super problematic either, and a killer that I honestly think is one of the best killers they've done since. I think the Oni as a killer is super fun, and the Oni kind of makes you as a player respect the killer, because if you give a free hit to the Oni, like super early on, mm -hmm. it's problematic, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not problematic, not really, as long as you, you know, you don't allow that to happen. So, yeah, like it, it mixes, it mixes the qual you have to play a basic killer that has no power, right? Which most people don't like, but 
when you do that well enough, you get rewarded by one of the strongest burst type powers in the game. And I remember that in the B2B, he was a little bit more overtuned and he was so busted. It was really so was. funny. Yeah, on release, you know, he was pretty much the way he is now. Some minor things aside, I think. So I think just a very solid chapter. Uh, like, it's almost never been a chapter like, like this, where the map is decent, the survivor is decent. Uh, the design on everything is good. The map isn't super broken. None of the perks become super annoying or pay to win. Like, I, I think it's one of the best chapters they've done. And I remember playing this being one of my favorite releases at the time. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, that alone would put it in great impact or at least good impact. What do you think? I agree with you because the Oni, again, just does everything that I like. It's weird. Like you spawn in and you're just normal. You're a normal killer. And then you progressively get back. It's what I would love to see out of Myers, but you get it with Oni instead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, um, how do we feel about putting it in the good impact? Do we think it breaches the great impact of the other chapters or a bit short, maybe? I think good. Okay, that's fair. I'm Chains of Hate. New map. Uh, Dead Dog Saloon, New Survivor, Zarina Kassir, New Killer, The Gunslinger, Man, Shooty Shooty Boy. What do we think of this chapter? I think the Deathslinger on his own was problematic, honestly. Because Ooh. his tier radius was lower, and he could kind of like quick scope, right? Yeah, you're talking about Release Slinger, that's true, I almost forgot. Yes. Yeah, on release, the Slinger was a reduced tier radius killer, and he had the ability to instantly shoot you instead of having to aim for like 0 0.4 seconds like now. Uh, there were also some other bad things, like his break chain animation was four seconds. There were a few other, like it wasn't, he didn't have some of the nice add-ons that he has now, like the iridescent insta shot. So it wasn't all roses, but he was a bit less fun. Let's just put it that way. Like He, he was a bit, he, the counterplay was harder and he had some rougher edges. Uh, Zarino, right. Um, keep in mind that off of the record, which is a really strong perk now, was basically useless. Uh, then her other perk, uh, the fishy one, red herring, I'm sorry, Cope, I think it's useless as well. <laughs> I know you like it sometimes. It's fun. Um, and yeah, and then there was for the people, which was okay, but had a much longer um, penalty for using it. So how do you feel? How do you feel about the map? Uh, really fast best work they've done since or before that i think i think if i said earlier oh this wasn't the pinnacle of design i think this map is the pinnacle of good design interesting some some reservations not perfect not perfect and definitely affects different killers differently but i think this map is as good as it gets in terms of like when you look at it you're like okay good survivors can obviously run you in the main building a lot and this map can be tough but then you also realize that almost anywhere else, like a good killer will get hit. Like some of the pallets here are so well designed that you have a lot of uh, opportunities on both sides to express your skill. And it's a world of difference chasing a good or a bad survivor in this map or being chased by a good or a bad killer in this map. Uh, the fact that the map itself is not super small, but has most of the elements towards the middle also makes it feel really fair for both sides. Uh, other than the the bushes and people hiding them and, and being hard to see. I think gameplay-wise, this map is pretty great. I, I really like it. It also has a lot of holes and double floors which and, and lockers, which, I mean, we've all seen the bully squad moments. But yeah. other than that, like it lends itself to a lot of different fun gameplay styles, I'd say. I really like ignoring the main building, and then I would completely agree with everything that you just said. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, to be fair, at its worst, the main building, remember there was a patch where there was a window where there shouldn't be, and it was a legit infinite? <laughs> yeah, Sounds no, there, there are some dark spots on an otherwise pretty good map. Um, the Deathslinger on release, his perks were forgettable. Zarina on release, her perks were forgettable. You. Gearhead um yeah w did nothing was basically one of the worst perks a dead man switch was an obsession perk terrible retribution i mean it was okay but there weren't that many um very niche. yeah it was pretty niche but all of these perks eventually all of them off the record almost all of them uh, not 
No, it's not all of them, I guess. But almost all of these players got reworked into being decent. Uh, Zarina, I think, is an, an interesting character. I like her. Good design. And the Deathslinger right now, I think, is one of those killers that is perfectly in the middle. Not the strongest, not the weakest. Uh, with the changes, fairly designed. Uh, pretty fun. Skill expressive. Like, good stuff. Good stuff. I have two different opinions, then. Okay. I think on release, them. I would probably go with neutral yeah i can see that but was it, right was it, now was it that bad to play against this killer yeah it was pretty miserable Tell with me monitor it. and abuse combined with his low tier radius <laughs> such a nightmare it's just like oh he's there i guess he's already shot me yeah cool. all right how how small was his terror radius like that 60 meters and his range was 80 meters which meant that he could shoot you before you even heard the terror radius that was pretty miserable i remember that <laughs> oh dear okay would you say that ever since it had it's had an um, overall good impact or does it all does it all more or less cancel itself out into neutral overall i would say good if if i have to look at everything right now yeah i mean if you bought this chapter now or if this chapter came out the way everything is now that would have been really good good killer good map good survivor decent perks uh that you know I'm breaking the game too much. Good stuff, right? Yeah. So maybe yeah. good impact is fair. We then have the Silent Hill chapter that introduced Cheryl, the Executioner, and the Midwich Preschool map. And uh, that's it. I, mean, uh, I find Midwich so boring. Uh, yeah. I mean, I when you see someone and they just run straight, it's like, okay. Yeah. yeah, I know. Here we go. I know, I know. Um. Midbridge is actually one of my favorite maps. I actually kind of like it. I'm sorry. Really? It. Yeah. It's so annoying to navigate. I know, I know. I know. Okay. Here's what I like about Midbridge. Much like Hawkins that we said earlier, like we said earlier, it is a very fixed map. Uh, other than a few things that, that change that maybe shouldn't, uh, the rooms are always in the same spot. There are some rules where if a window is here, then it won't be there. You can learn this map, and it feels really good. Every time you play it, it's almost like you're a little bit better every time. And I like that on both sides. I do agree for some characters, especially back when Objectal Obsession existed and some things. Like, you could be chasing after a survivor for 20 years. This map is hurting for a few more holes or, or broken walls here and there to make navigation easier, right? Like... That would be really good. I'm, I'm sure we all agree, right? So that it also be... has a problem with hooks for some reason. I was playing offline and um, I believe it was like an ace. He broke a hook downstairs okay. next to where my basement would have been. And I'm like, okay, I'll just go find another one. <laughs> Nowhere near me. Yeah, uh, I believe well. they've, they've fixed, they've improved that recently, at least a bit. But historically, this map has been really, really bad. There was a point when someone sent me a, a video uh, of their midwitch game they killed one survivor in the first floor so you know one one hook disappeared right there was right. no other hook on the first floor all the hooks except for one were on the second floor and then basement so yeah that's a bit of a disaster and i even though i really like the map and i'm subjectively predisposed to to enjoy it i will also say this map is unbelievably evil when one of the sites has some ideas. As you said, if you have a survivor that is pre-running with certain perks, you would never catch them. It would be super annoying. But on the killer side, it's even worse. How many times did you play against Starstruck Nurse that send themselves to this to this map? Uh, and oh then they boy. find you in three seconds, and then they down you in three seconds, and there's no escape. Yeah, I just had a trapper constantly send me to Midwitch, and have the traps open up, you know, here and there, and I keep running into them. And, you know, people have their plans for you. I mean, even then, like, the, no matter how evil a trapper is, it just doesn't come close to some of the things that you could do in this map. For example, I mean, trapper could make the exit gates, which are really, really unfair, by the way. Very difficult, and that'll be a problem. But a pig, back then, with her add-ons, the pig on this map was a monster. You literally did not have physical time to do three or yeah. four searches just because you had to. Like, the navigation on this map is just... Like, even if something is on a different room, you have to go up and about, up and about, up and about. So even if you're physically very close, you have to take many roundabout paths, and it was 
so which bad. is even worse in your example of like a starstruck nurse that's just like boom boom there you yeah, go yeah no basically um nurse had a perk for a long time that allowed her to insta down you right so she just had a lot of ways to essentially make this a playground where she just bullied you so yeah the map what we're trying to get at is that the map has a lot of flaws that can be exploited and this has been a bit of a headache over the years i personally still like it i think it's maybe the i want to say the best indoor map in the game don't i would don't kill me i'm going to say that midwitch is a great representation let just like um gideon's is like um oh you mean like an adaptation of the original material yes. oh yeah yes. no it's like it's literally a copy of the entire yeah no it's that that part is on a, on a technical level it's very impressive right and everything else in the chapter was very good looking. Like, no question there. And it was one of the few licensed chapters that got a lot of skins, which was really good. You know, I find absolutely hilarious. We haven't even talked about the characters at all yet. I know, I know. I mean, Cheryl was okay. Uh, Bloodbag, a bit gimmicky. Okay. Soulguard was pretty good back when hexes were super popular. Um, what's the other perk? I forgot. Oh, Repressed Alliance has always been a bit gimmicky, but, I mean, mm. it's cool, I guess. Uh, the perks on the killer side, absolutely atrocious, though. Uh, until recently, Trail of Torment was garbage. Uh, then we had... Um, what's the Forced other one? Penance. The Forced Penance. I mean, to be fair, these perks are kind of finding a Deathbound. But they're finding, like, a niche. They, over the years, like, Forced Penance has found a niche. Which good on Twins, it's used in tournaments, whatever. Trail of Tr Torment is now a decent stealth perk, so that's nice. But yeah. How do you feel about Pyramid Head on release, though? Okay, Pyramid Head on release felt unbelievably smooth. He was able to transition from holding his sword into an insane attack. Um, he felt incredible to play because back then, survivor perks were basically all hook perks. So Borrow Time, Decisive Strike, Deliverance, uh, all of these perks. And this killer destroyed all of them. So I actually thought I would main this killer for a long time. But then they tried to correct the bug that allowed him, it was a bug it turns out, that allowed him to transition from holding your sword and dragging it to attacking. And they corrected mm. the bug, but you could still do it. So what did they do to prevent that? They made it have a one second period, a one second cooldown after dragging his sword. And that felt so bad. It was... Like, the so gameplay hard. on this killer was so bad. Not to mention that, at this point, Freddy obviously was still its own beast. He had been reworked and stuff. Uh, the Deathslinger had really, really bad add-ons, but then they all reworked. This would be the first killer to have a garbage set of add-ons that wouldn't be reworked or touched at all for years. For the next years, you would look at this killer and be like, okay, he has two good add-ons and then 18 yeah. trash ones. And that was really, <laughs> really sad that they never really address that properly yeah you don't really have to acknowledge anything other than in, like increased range honestly yeah, yeah. i mean and, and even that it's just really really bad so yeah uh not the most I want, healthy for the game i want to call one more thing out i recently played him again and when using my judgment i feel like my camera is just like wobbling all oh, over yeah, the place no, that's a recent bug but yeah he's can't he's he's field okay. of view is weird and 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 screwy yeah you're not crazy Okay. Uh, I, I <laughs> listen, overall, this was a massive, massive license. It brought a lot of people to the game. And I think that basically overrules all of the lukewarm opinions we've had. Would we put him in good impact? Despite all the bad things we just said. Okay. Yeah. I think that sounds fair. Okay. No, you're not even going to argue. No. Okay. I fair, love your man, that idea. Next up, The Sand Beyond, a chapter with that came with no map which is going to be true for the next few. Uh, it came with Felix Richter, uh, or Richter, and the Blight. Now, keep in mind, the Blight on release, much like Spirit, she was already going to be a really strong character, but she was kind of broken. Well, the Blight was the same. He was incredibly short. His camera was buggy and, and, and really, really low. Uh, but he could already do flicks and all the other stuff, and, you know, shortly after he got fixed into being a really fearsome killer, soon to be the second best killer in the game. Uh, yeah, Felix also came with some perks that 
increased healing and unhooking, which was nice. Uh, one that was really simple to make, um, to give you back your item charges. Not too bad. And the ability to see gens. Eh, pretty forgettable. What do we think? Mm. Oh, but the blight brought undying, I believe, right? Oh, oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Okay, you're problematic. Right. Very, oh, very problematic. Oh my god, oh my god, you're right. Okay. So a lot of people used Hex Ruin in combination with Undying, Hex Undying as well. Yeah. And there were times we'd have to cleanse Ruin multiple times, Ruin multiple yeah. times. And the games just lasted forever, it felt like. Yeah. So, that so was the, very yeah. problematic. So we mentioned earlier that Ruin was basically the go-to meta perk for years, and this was still true. And now you had Undying, which basically protected it maybe once, maybe twice, maybe thrice, maybe four times. You know, you had to do so many totems, and it was somewhat random. And as a solo player, forget about it. And you might, you might cleanse three or four totems and still have a Ruin left. Not only that, while you cleanse a totem, the killer could see you doing it. Because your auto was revealed, which was really dumb. And dying became such a staple. Ruin and dying would be such a solid meta. Uh, back then when I did my 50 win series, I swear I got half my wins with those two perks. You know, it was so Art. easy to win. It was so busted. And it went on for a month or two, I want to say. A couple months, maybe. Until undying was dial back a little bit into roughly what it is now. I didn't remember that. Yeah, that's a really, really, really good point. Jesus. Yeah, it was typically like Ruin, Undying with Pop Goes the Weasel, but because Ruin was a little bit different back then, so you could still regress the generators even more. Super duper common. I actually think that by the time... By the time Undying came out, Ruin had already been reworked, I believe. Had it? So you could not use Pop, Ruin... And undying. But I mean what people did, they did run ruin and undying. And then the idea was that ruin was really good. And when they got rid of it, I switched to using like insurance. Yeah, okay. yeah, like plan A, plan B. And that was stupid. That was beyond stupid. The scent beyond stupid, right? <laughs> but uh yeah. Uh not not a very healthy meta. But I mean, can we judge anything else on this chapter positively? What's your overall take? Did this just sour everything? And then the Blights um, POV, like you said. Yeah. Um, that took a few if months. If we're, again, judging a chapter based off of the release, I didn't like it on the release, nah. honestly. I mean, we can also factor in the legacy. This would be one of the most fun characters to play as, and that's evident by the fact that he's very popular. But I also Incredibly feel like he's strong. a nightmare. An absolute nightmare to balance. The developers have been so bad ever since this release, and that was years ago. The Blight has been consistently busted at every turn, has had at least one insane or multiple insane add ons. Now he's been reworked and they still haven't gotten him right. Uh, does this sour this chapter into oof? Or, or is it more of a neutral? Because, I mean, good characters, Felix, you know, no bad map attached to it. I would go neutral. All right. I think that's fair. Although uh, I think a lot of people will disagree. Yeah, I mean, you could also say that Undying, after it was reworked, made a lot of perks that were not too good, a bit viable, like the Devour Hope, Lullaby. So, I mean, you can look at the legacy of this chapter in a somewhat positive light. Right. I guess, if we're if we're going to say that. But yeah. Oh, no. The Binding of Kin. Now, mm. a little bit of foreshadowing. One of the reasons why this chapter took so long to fix, one of the reasons why the animations on Blight were broken for several months is because the team was incredibly busy animating the next killer, which was very difficult to animate, the twins. Uh, it came I out with... That. Yeah, no, they said that. It, it came out with LV Rakoto and no map. Uh, you remember that, right? No map. So uh, what do we think of the Binding of Kin? Um, a disaster. <laughs> yeah, disaster. Absolute disaster. Um, Victor being like, just like weird for so long, like it palettes and stuff. And the play style that the twins kind of encouraged and Charlotte's just like a, like a vehicle, like an Uber for Victor, <laughs> just driving him around. It's, it's, I don't really know what to say. I mean, I mean, we could start by saying that this 
was possibly the first chapter to release incomplete. On release, right? If you went into a locker, Victor could do nothing. Literally nothing. You you couldn't do anything. Like you didn't have the option to hold them in the locker like you can now. I didn't know that. Yes. For That's like funny. three weeks. They they said, okay, listen, this is a problem, but we're gonna patch it. Okay. So on release, we already knew that something was broken. There were an unbelievable amount of bugs um, around the twins. Most of them have remained to this day, which is insane to say. Like this killer, you, you know, one of those like viruses that resists all the antibiotics or all the vaccines. This is the same. They've had bugs that have just never, ever been extinguished. extinguished. And on release, the twins were actually a little bit stronger than now. They actually, um, um, they, they actually were really, really good at slugging and, and dealing with people. But to deal with this, they added some really hefty cooldowns. So now we had this really strange killer that was buggy, felt really awful to play, but wasn't weak necessarily. The developers were quoted saying that the twins were really good at high MMR and they call them high MMR monsters. You'll remember that. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, on the survivor side, I'm so sorry, Elodie, beautiful survivors, her perks might as well just disappear tomorrow. If I took away her perks tomorrow, nobody would notice. There is one Can gimme perk. Refresh my memory on the perks. Uh, Deception, which is honestly the most fun perk. Deception allows you to fake a pallet entrance, sorry, a locker entrance, which, I mean, it's led to some funny clips, fair enough. Then um, the perk that allows you to search chests that have already been opened. Appraisal. appraisal garbage perk always has been bad i could make an entire thesis on why it's complete garbage and then uh i'm mean, gonna have to remind me what is the final perk uh, she doesn't have power struggle does she uh yeah no no, no p power struggle okay which is a cute perk that in theory is supposed to like punish a killer for walking through a pallet in practice you just use it with pl with uh, plot twist and flip flop to make yourself unkillable yeah. and it has but so much exploit potential i feel but looking at the perk on its own, it's just kind of like, uh, eh, you know. Like yeah, they, they, they also had to buff it because on release it was absolute garbage. You had to like, remember you that. Basically, like, like you had to essentially like wiggle way more before you triggered. So even in a situation where you could have been helpful, half the times it didn't do anything. So yeah. This, <sighs> this is a killer I've still not played one of the few, by the way. Yeah. Just well, because it looks that fresh. <laughs> I mean, do you remember how good the perks on the killer were on release? Garbage as well. Coup de grass. Was um, terrible. It was nerfed yeah. on release, and it was really bad. Um, the perk... Now it's kind of... <laughs> dare I say kind of a problem sometimes? Yeah, no, no. I, I actually agree with you. It's a hot take, I think. Not many people agree with us, but I'll debate for another day, maybe. Fair enough. Uh, or do you want to go into it? <laughs> mm, you get enough tokens to just get away with like anything. Walk yeah. up to the killer shack. You're not that close. They make the window. Nah, probably not, because you have tokens left, stuff like that. I, I personally think it's like a killer MFT, where as a survivor, you just don't know what you're supposed to do. Like, with this perk, you get hits that are, like, on... on, on you, you take a, a, a tile that is fair, that normally gives a 50-50 chance, and it's 100% in your favor now. I personally find it a bit unfun, but whatever. This perk on release was garbage. Uh, Hoarder on release was incredibly niche and very garbage. Then it got nerfed, which is pathetic to say. And then the other perk was, let's see, Coup de Gras, Horder, and Oppression, which has been basically really, really bad forever, with very limited ex exceptions. Terrible, terrible, forgettable perk. But, All right, it best. Yeah. And yeah, overall, forgettable gameplay, forgettable everything, like, like messy, uh, buggy. Like, one of the chapters that... Honestly, has gotten no love since. The box are still there. Charlotte has received like three cosmetics since she came out, which is insane. Uh, the play, like consistently, consistently, one thing that this chapter does very well, consistently at the bottom of pick rate for all killers. Charlotte, in almost every poll that you do or almost any statistic, the number one least played killer. So, so that yep. should tell you something. And to this day, they still haven't fixed it. And even though we played on the PTB, on the rework, that was also a disaster. Yeah. I watched you play it. It looked yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So something that has been th this came out like what? When was this? Uh, 2019. 2020. It's been that long? No. 2020. I, I 2020. Would guess it's been almost four years. Let's just put it that way. And they still haven't okay. recovered from how bad this chapter was. So, yeah. Uh, qualified disaster. Do we agree with that? Yes. Yeah, sorry, Linksy, if you're watching this. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. All kill. The trickster, no map, and uh, Jinjin chapter. I think this chapter is good for the audience that they were trying to cater to to bring more do you know do you know what i mean like trying to yeah appeal the representation more... and the, and right. the international appeal okay that's a good point yeah but oh god outside of that i don't feel like the trickster is he's you mentioned a... pick rates and yeah the no trickster he's been a bit of a good. like they buffed him so many times like they buffed him like no joke three times and he was still one of the weakest and then they reworked him and then all the trickster mains were unhappy and nobody likes to play against this killer. And even after the rework, people still despise him. Yeah, so. you make him faster, and then you kind of take the incentive away from using your knives. So it's like, okay. For them, it's probably like, what do you want me to do, I guess? Yeah. Uh, I feel like I the know. very concept of this killer is problematic. Because the Hunters has a big hatchet that is well telegraphed. And it's a big moment of like... Ooh, do I touch it? Ooh, do I get hit? Ooh, do I land it? Ooh, do I miss? But this killer is like death by a thousand knives. Oh, you touch a little bit? Well, it doesn't matter. You know, he has 60 billion other knives. This has always been a problem. I think this is the core of why people dislike him. The thing is, at its worst, the trickster is really bad. They're running around certain obstacles. You never catch them. At his best, he's unbelievably oppressive. You go down in seconds, right? open area yep. yeah in an open area so it always feels bad for both sides it's a killer that stomps or gets stomped and rarely gets an in-between result uh junjin cool design i really like the fact that they had a survivor that wasn't a poor damsel in distress you know like that that's all cool the perks i would say on both sides were pretty okay trickster introduced no way out which i think was unbelievably good for the game because it encouraged multiple hooks and often extended into the end game and was really strong at the time that's uh, fair so, yeah, for every good thing I can think of, there's also one bad or one mediocre one. So, it's just... I like just... Starstruck <gasps> for it being fun. Oh, dear. Like, niche, you know? Yeah. And whatever build, you know, yeah. you may have in mind. I'm drawing a blank on the Trickster's third perk. Uh Oh, um, Crowd Control, which is like a semi bamboozle you're gonna hate this but i love crowd control no, when it works i love it i love it really yeah i love it too unsuspecting survivors they like try to double vault and they're just like <laughs> yeah oh. yeah H haven't you ever pulled it off where you go on gideon and they run to the little top and one of them vaults and then the other one is trapped like it's so I funny wish. yeah no crowd control is great uh starstruck i mean the only problem was nurse nurse with starstruck was unbelievably broken but then they changed nurse and then it was fine and, and No Way Out, as I said, I think a top tier perk that encouraged healthy gameplay. So and extended the end game, which was quite necessary. So I really, really like it. Um, and with Yun Chin Li, um, self-preservation? <laughs> yeah, self-preservation. Uh, not ver not a very common perk in the meta ever. Then another perk no. that also saw no use was um, uh, the one where you get more skill checks when someone else gets hooked. I forgot what it was. I forgot what it's called. You know the one, right? Well, someone gets us. Are we talking about fast, uh, fast track? Fast, fast track. track. Okay. Yeah. Um, basically, someone gets hooked, and you get a bit more skill check progress. Eh. Eh. Like it, it wasn't great at the time. I guess it wasn't the best at the time, but now has aged really poorly because you have things like deja vu, which are just ten times better. Yeah. Um, but smash it was, I think, good design. And after you got buffed a little bit, decent perk, right? Yeah, low cooldown and all. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Does this strike you as just a neutral chapter? Neutral to good. Good on the best day, though. Yeah. Uh, we could put it in between if we could. Where, where do we are? Uh... I think neutral. All right, fair. Like, yeah. it's okay, but the trickster is... Yeah. I don't know. All right. So now we go to the next chapter. Is that okay? Yep. 
Resident Evil chapter, the first one. Great. Um, I already think it's great. You already think it's great? I do. It brought so many new players. Another uh, great... Yeah, no, to... I, I was going to say, uh, just a little note. This During the release of this chapter, we had the highest ever we did, yeah. player count. I also remember streaming the reveal of some of this to like 30,000 people plus, which is insane That's to so think awesome. about. That's so awesome. Like yeah. Resident Evil fans just mm -hmm. getting that out of the game. Yeah. Uh, that being said... That being said, I am, I am the biggest Resident Evil fan. I was the biggest fan of this happening. Don't tell me wrong. However, yeah. you will remember that especially on release, we had some issues with this chapter. The game was... RPD was massive, wasn't it? Yeah, RPD, instead of being split into two, was all combining to one monstrous mess and honestly has so many problems. It was... Yeah, the, the, the map design was just really not at its best. We had some unbelievably safe pilots. Really, really boring stuff. It wasn't necessarily a map that stood out for being super killer set or super survivor sided. It was a map that just encouraged you to split it in half and play in the dirtiest possible ways. And it was really unfun for a lot of players and situations. But that's the map. E even more impactful, you'll remember that for consoles, the game was unplayable for a month. They had these horrible stutters on release where the game would like stutter. I didn't, yeah, I didn't know that. I, I think we just forget about these things because it's because we play on PC number one, number two because it's been so long. But I'm telling you, it was a big deal on P on, on on consoles. This game was unplayable for a very long time. Uh, you also remember that Jill had a really strange face model that they corrected later. Yeah, Claire looked fucking. Weird, mm -hmm. super weird. And, yeah. And we could also argue that, yeah, Nemesis. I mean, it's still it's still a bit lackluster, mm -hmm. but his add-on design was terrible. The zombie AI was somehow even worse than it is now. Uh, overall, me technical level, the, the, the chapter was okay. But I think about all of these things. And I want to say that that holds it back a little bit. But just the just the hype and the player base and the fact that for the most part, most of the things have been ameliorated over time. Do you think it's still maybe number two most important chapter? Is that... I think it is. I think it's super important. It was very good for the game, even if people hated Nemesis on release, which <laughs> they certainly did. Okay. I think it's great. All right, well, uh, that's it. I think the biggest impact was just the, the fact that it was a big license. Should we move on to the next, or do you have something else to say? We can move on to Hellraiser. Do you remember what happened around the Hellraiser chapter? Do you remember I remember people were very upset, but I don't completely remember why. Uh, want me to go into it a little bit? Sure. Right, so um, Hellraiser at the time of this chapter's release was owned by someone other than the creator of the of the IP. Now it's gone back to him, I believe. But back then it was owned by a company that a lot of people were not familiar with. And this company was into NFTs. So at one point they announced, hey, look, we're using the model from DVD and we're putting it into a bunch of NFTs. Look at Pinhead with some cool sunglasses, right? And people were cringing at that. And also, if you buy the NFT, you get exclusive rewards in-game. Now, in reality, all this was is that if you bought their stupid NFT, you were going to get a DLC key, right? Right. But people freaked out and they thought that there would be some exclusive skin that would only come with NFTs, right? And can you imagine the, 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 the outrage, the outcry? If you had to buy an NFT, which was a super expensive, you know, piece of technology to own a skin, that would have been a really bad present. NFTs, basically, the, the reason why they were controversial is because the technology itself was incredibly harmful for the environment and a few other things, right? Um, so, yeah, that, that was horrible press. Now, I, I imagine because of contractual reasons, the developers of Dead by Daylight had to basically say, yeah, well, yeah, we... We, we we gave them permission to do that with the DVD model because kind of we signed a contract, kind of, XD, you know? 
So they couldn't <laughs> really make a stance against it, and it made them look really, really poor. And another thing that was a bit controversial on release, this killer had voice lines, but the voice lines were not narrated by the original actor of Pinhead, which I think his name is Doug Bradley. So that became a, a, a controversy, a, a, an issue with uh, copyright, and they took out the voice lines, and he didn't have voice lines for a while. Eventually, though, sometime later, they hired Doug Bradley to make the new voice lines, and then they came back, which was awesome. But yeah, on release, uh, this was a paragraph with only one killer, no new survivor, no new map. The killer itself, uh, a few rough edges, but for the most part, he worked just fine and was a great adaptation. But then it came with all of these controversies. What do you remember about it? Oh, boy. I've actually never played Pinhead. Really? Never? Um, Yeah, one of the few again. Oh, okay. I do remember people boycotting boycotting DVD for exactly what you just said mm -hmm. with the NFTs and all. Yeah, I, I, I think it really... was a it was a case of a, in the end when everything was cleared up, it was a bit of an overreaction. But you know, gotta remember that at the time, the the announcement of the NFTs came out of left field. People thought it was a scam. Then they realized that it was a legit company. Then they thought that this would mean that you would need to buy NFTs to play the game. It was super, super confusing. And it took them a long time to make a statement that made things even worse. Uh, but yeah, uh, from a from a perk standpoint, uh, what did we have? We had Plaything. We had... Um, uh, some other perks that were quite popular. Remind me, uh, wh what are his perks? Oh my goodness, dude. I can't... I, you I, help I, me out here. <laughs> no, dude, I was about to say Call O'Brien, but no, 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 no. That's sad, dude. Yeah, cool, that's, that, that's, okay. coming, that's coming up. That's coming up in a few chapters. Um, Gift of Pain, and okay. which was a Scorch Hook, right? I would love your opinion on Gift of Pain. Oh. Eh. Like I always has been overshadowed by Sloppy, until fairly recently, at least. I think just too complicated and also doesn't work if you tunnel, which is what half the killers want to do anyway. Yeah, true. But yeah, um, oh, I'm, you're going to have to remind me about the third perk, however. What was it? Um, Plaything, Gift of Pain. Mm, we're struggling, man. <laughs> do I just fire up Google right now? Is yeah, that, do it. Do doing? it. Help us out. Okay. <laughs> it's We're going to feel so stupid when we say it. <laughs> What do we have here? What do we have here? Um, I'm not even trying to remember anymore. I've I'm I'm defeated. Don't be. <laughs> COVID's taking you a long time. What's going on? <laughs> I can't even find them. Really? Wait, hang on. Okay, <laughs> deadlock. Jesus. Oh, it's deadlock. Okay, that's why I thought Call of Brian. I'm so stupid. Yeah, that's why I thought Call O'Brien, because it was a slowdown perk. Yeah, Deadlock. Now, the thing about Deadlock is that everyone ran Deadlock for a long time. It was a really good perk. Uh, but it was a bit like Painless, where or Ruined, where no one played the killer it came from. So I think I think Deadlock can be a bit pro problematic, actually. Uh, you want to walk us into that? Do you think it had a negative impact? Go, go for it. Mm, I think it promotes something people hate. Not me, personally, but I think it promotes tunneling, to be honest. <laughs> Because if you take uh, a lot of time just to gun one person out, yeah. which you can, you have deadlock as insurance to block mm -hmm. the next progress generator and then move on from there. Right. So so you're saying that it kind of promoted or encouraged the gameplay of ignore everything, tunnel one guy. I will take it one step further. I'm going to say that back then, camping was even stronger. Think, think about it this way, okay? No Way Out was at its peak. No one had reassurance. There was no anti-camp. I remember doing experiments around the time Deadlock came out, and you could camp with Cannibal or other strong killers very consistently and get such good results because survivors had very little tools to fight against camping. So that was very much of a problem, and Deadlock made it worse. Overall, though, I would say that it kind of diversified the, 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 the perk landscape. If you wanted to play Hag or Huntress, killers that are not very good at mobility and kicking gens, now you had a really good alternative. So I'd say overall, yeah, for, for, for how amazing of an adaptation, let's, we, I'm sure we agree, right? Like the killer itself looks sick. Everything, like visuals and stuff, they're, they're good, right? Or yeah. do you feel mixed I, about that? I think that? it's cool. Despite like the controversy, controversy and everything that went on, yeah. I actually don't mind Pinhead. To be honest, 
See, that's the sad part. Despite this being a really cool killer, he's he's mostly passed to DBD history without glory or or anything. So I, I would say all of the negative things have just m basically countered all of the positives on this chapter. Which you would was, leave uh, it in neutral. Yeah, I would leave it in neutral. Is that? Do you think that's fair? I think that's fair. I do actually. All right. Then we had Hour of the Witch, which introduced was also a paragraph, introduced Michaela, the first three boons, Shadow Step, um, no, wait, no, not the three boons, the first two boons, Shadow Step and Circle of Healing, and another little perk uh, called Clairvoyance. Yes. Uh, and a really cute character that has been really popular ever since. What did this chapter do for the game? Good, bad? Legacy. I think boons were on release were a little bit of were, a problem with were, the way circle of healing worked i guess to be fair so busted. <laughs> they were so it's like all right busted. i hit this first and i'll see you in five seconds when you're healed bye bye okay yeah like what was the healing speed for a person i think it was 21 seconds after they touched it a bit but originally you basically could heal yourself in like what 16 seconds it also stacked <laughs> with medkits so you could have a dude with a medkit heal himself in like six, seven seconds or something. Yeah, the circle of healing was insane. On the PTB, it stacked with itself, which was insane as well. On release, it allowed you to heal yourself at the normal healing rate, which... Like, you saw this perk every match for yeah, months. Yeah, really good. And months and months and months. It was good on Survivor Friends. It was good for solos. It was so good. It was like self-care on steroids but it only costs one perk slot on one survivor instead of four on each, right? The same token, I would actually say that boon, this paved the way for boons to be what they are. And I do think they're, like, genuinely, I think they're nice perks to have. Listen, I'm going to say, if boons were removed from the game, I wouldn't cry. I don't think, like... Really? I, I understand that now they're in an acceptable spot and it was something new. But what have they brought to the game that has made it that much better? All the boons have either been too meh or too strong and then gotten nerfed. I... Isn't, isn't there a perk to stop the problem with boons, though? Oh, don't even get me started, dude. Oh, my God. I'm, Shadow I'm gonna, Hope, is that what it's called? I'm, yeah, I'm going to punch my monitor. I'm so upset, <laughs> man. I'm so mad about that. Don't, don't Honestly, I don't even know what it does. Okay. I'll, I'll yeah. uh, Want me to explain it a bit for the audience that might not remember? Yes, sure. Okay, so the developers saw that boons were incredibly popular, that they had an incredibly strong effect, that it helped solo players play almost like Survivor fans, that it made Survivor fans sometimes really obnoxious. Now you might think, well, Ots, couldn't you just go to a boon and destroy it? Yeah, but then they could set it up again. And this happened over and over and over. Some of my most frustrating games lasted like 18 minutes. I broke boons constantly because... You might think, well, just ignore them. You can't, because if you ignore them, people heal so quickly, they can take hits for each other constantly. It yeah, was, might, might yeah. I cut in really fast and say that if you had a boon, like, upstairs, even more problematic. Like like a vantage He's, area, right? That covers everything, you yeah. mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Th then the killer had to waste a lot of time. It was yeah, super, super troublesome, super difficult to balance. Um, eventually, they did nerf Circle of Healing, and all the other boons have been eh, okay-ish, right? But, yeah. Uh, on release, Circle of Healing was disabled, but after they fixed it, most of the chapter, I think, was bad memories. Bad, bad memories. It, was, it, it made it pff, really, really... It, it, you know when Ruin and Dying was really nasty for survivors? Well, this was the same for Killers. It was just a perk that you saw every time that was really unfun to play against, especially for the weaker, slower Killers. And personally, I I've, I really dislike uh, the way they, they handle boons ever since. I don't think they've made good efforts but yeah uh, overall though the clairvoyance was blocked on release or had a functionality that allowed you to push the killer so you could actually yeah. like push them off balconies which was hilarious um and michaela herself is a cool character that a lot of people like so i i think the you know the overall positives maybe you know make this a pretty forgettable chapter Two things really quick. Shattered Hope released without a chapter, correct? Yes, no. In order, okay. that's the thing I forgot to mention. In order to help the killers, the developers release a new common perk. Now, keep in mind, they hadn't done this since the times of the hag, I think. 
or yeah, Hag or, or Huntress. So essentially, what happened is that we had a new perk on the killer side called Shattered Hope. And if you equip this perk, you could go to a boon, break it, you would see the autos of people around you for a bit, and then the boon was permanently broken. Now this sounds really nice, but there's two problems. Number one, they can they still have four other totems they can do that to. And number one, what if they don't have a boon? Even though boons were really strong, they were also very strong other perks. So what killer in their right mind would dedicate one perk to maybe counter boons a little? Not even a lot, a little. It was pathetic. It was one of the worst perks they've ever designed. It's still in the game. It's still exactly the same. The same. And honestly, embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing. I see, your, I see your point. You're saying that there's no purpose to equipping it when you can just snuff the boon and... Like, almost equip. every other perk in the game gives you value, either directly or indirectly, right? For example, if you equip the perk Distortion and the killer has barbecue, what happens? You lose a token, right? Yeah. But what happens if you don't lose a token? What do you gain then? Knowledge. Exactly. What's the knowledge? That the killer doesn't have barbecue. If they don't have like barbecue or blood or Yeah, anything, exactly. Really. You can. So even when distortion doesn't work, it's telling you something, right? No? Yeah. Like, like it's the same with discordance on killer. Discordance. It lets you know when multiple survivors are on a gen. If it never goes off, that means that they're splitting up or they're not doing gens. So either way, almost every perk in the game will either do something or help you indirectly, right? Um, I don't know, like Sloppy Butcher, for example. Uh, if you apply it to a bunch of people, either it will slow them down uh, when it comes to healing, or if they, don't, if they choose not to heal, well, it doesn't do anything, but that's also a good outcome for you, maybe, right? Maybe that's what you want. Right. You don't want them to heal in the first place. So every perk in the game has some usage. But then there's Shadow Hope, literally a perk that unless the other survivor brings a specific type of perk and uses it, it does literally nothing. <laughs> that's, that's like, it's literally a perk where you cannot use unless the other side has something. And there's not a lot of perks like that. And it's pathetic. It's absolutely pathetic. I find it horrible design. One of the lowest points of DBD. Like they thought, yeah, instead of adjusting this perk that is busted, let's just make a perk on the other side that half counters it. Eventually, obviously, this wasn't enough, and they had to nerf boons, or Circle of Healing in particular. That sounds like a pretty worthless perk, yeah. But, yeah. To say the least. Uh, what do we make of the Hour of the Witch, then? I'm not sure what to say, because we're kind of split here, believe it or not. I think having boons... Like as an I it like it really paved the way for boons. And it, it, I mean, I, let's let's be honest. We do complain when there's nothing new. It was a new mechanic. I think it was it was honestly implemented so badly that I, as I said, I would have missed it. But it's something new. I would keep it neutral just because of the positives of new mechanics, but also the negatives of like it destroyed the meta for six months or seven months. So I'm going neutral. Do you feel similarly, or would you put it in good? Neutral, it is then. All right. Since we're split on it. Portrait of Murder, Eerie of oh Crows, Jonah Basket, and Carmina Mora, the artist. Well, if you're if if you're going to take a second, I'm just going to jump in and tell you I think this is a disaster. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> you know what? I'm not sure I 100% agree, but like I, I, my mindset's not far. So please walk us through your reasoning. Why is what was the this artist chapter a disaster? did not bring anything new to Dead by Daylight to me. You could argue that, yes, you can snipe across the map, and that's super cool, but you're a ranged killer that I feel... Like, does she do anything new? She's an anti-loop killer at times if you want to be. I, I, and I personally think she's really cool. Don't take me wrong. But I think that she was the first in a, in a trend that we'll see over the next few chapters of killers that are relatively strong, but also complicated, and people just don't play them. One and other thing. We'll see this in a lot of killers coming up. Strong killer, but it's too complicated, and there's other easier killers, and the counterplay is relatively easy or, or annoying, so people just don't play them. And you could be affected by flashlights back then. Yes. So, yeah, sure. uh, I, I, just really quick, just really quick. This chapter is a more recent chapter, and to be affected by an item, it's just kind of like... It's like, Why? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. yeah, they Just... removed that eventually. I mean, th that's honestly not the best design, but it's okay because she was a strong killer, right? It's just that she was a strong killer that required a lot of accurate preparation and setup and execution 
And we know historically that these killers just don't do that well. Like, people don't I, want to play this. I also think she's super cool. She looks really cool. I love her audio, but... Yeah. I just don't feel like she brought anything new, per se. And also, her map in particular... <laughs> it, it's so generic, Odds. It's such a generic map. I don't I don't feel also, like it's generic. And I actually, actually think it's really pretty. It's everything else really? that's wrong with it. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a Dark well, okay. Souls 3 area, whatever. When I say generic, I mean like the palettes. It's like okay. Oh no, a no, no! In. It's no gameplay-wise. It is as boring as it gets. It was extremely boring for both sides. Um, uh, what do you think about the survivor? Let me cue you on that because I know that's also. Jonas perks are corrective action, uh, overcome. I, I don't even know. And how to exponential. Use I've so, tried to use corrective action so many times, like to a point where I'm like, this feels good, and I never get to that no, point. No, it's a it's a garbage perk. Overcome, I think is I think it's oh, a great exhaustion perk. Yeah, it's okay. It's fine. Okay, perk. Cool. And exponential. Uh, I the love best, it. The best boon. The the one boon that is honestly okay. Yeah, I think I think exponential is alright. Uh okay, so a little problem that it's not personally my main focus on, on analyzing a chapter. The backstory of these two characters was really, really poor. Really, okay. really poor. Jonah is essentially a math genius that becomes a war criminal, accidentally nukes some kids or something, you know, airstrikes some kids. And a lot of people just saw that and were like, whoa, okay. All right, cool, I guess. Yeah, sure, war crimes by the CIA. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, thank you. Like, they didn't love it. Also, um, not to roast myself, because some people say I look a bit like him. He's not appealing. I think he's one of those characters that you just never saw anyone play for years. Just because he's not, you know, particularly um, the type of, 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 of character that people resonate with or like. Um, Carmina looks very cool, but her story is also weird. The first thing that people pointed out is that she's South American. But there's no crows. There's no crows in South America, so it almost makes you think that they created the character and the design, and then they were like, uh, "Yeah, make her chilly and whatever." So mm -hmm. she doesn't seem super coherent. She doesn't seem super well thought out, and people piece this apart, and they they make a good point. Now I agree with uh, basically everything you said. Uh, I do think the artist is really cool. It's just like, what's the point of making a character that is cool but is so unintuitive or so difficult? That no one plays them, right? And the map, Eerie of Crows, was honestly such a nightmare on release. You said was, so has your opinion changed or? Oh, right now it's a bad map with mediocre gameplay. Yeah. And, and 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 it's definitely below average and it's one of the worst maps in the game. But you know what I mean? Like th th there's something, imagine that you're in a class of geniuses and you're the least smart of all of them. Well, I mean, you're still pretty smart. You're not the brightest. In fact, you're the dumbest, but you're still pretty good, right? The dumbest genius. Yeah, you're the dumbest genius. But imagine that you are in a class of people that are not geniuses. They are dumbasses, and you are the dumbest of them all. Well, that's different. Even though you are at the bottom of both classes, it's quite different, right? So right now, I think Eerie of Crows is at the bottom of the tier list, but the maps that we have now are a lot better. A lot of the maps have changed. Back then, he was at the bottom of the tier list, and he was competing with the old cow shed. The old um, uh, mother's dwelling, uh, competing with the old Ormond at some point. Uh, like he was competing with basically all the old maps before they got to work. Maybe Ormond wasn't there, but you know what I mean, right? So it was the worst yeah. of the worst. It was a long map with a massive main building that had tiles behind it. Tiles spread everywhere. The fillers were incredibly safe. The shack was incredibly well placed. Everything about the the her, zero visibility. If you were a trapper player, forget about it. Zero grass. You know that hasn't changed much. So yeah, absolutely no. garbage map that probably had such bad kill rates that the developers were forced to change it. And now it's bad, but it's still much worse. <sighs> yeah, dude. I I don't think <laughs> I don't think we can even save this chapter then. It okay. sounds like. Would you believe me if I told you that I think that's not maybe even the worst thing about this chapter? 
Did we even talk about the artist's perks? That's what we're getting at. So we have Pandras, right? Pandras is currently easily the number one most powerful perk on Killer. Or at least it was for Arm. a long time. Uh, now, I honestly don't think there was there's anything too wrong with the idea. Uh, back then, Pandras worked on Scorch Hooks that, on every single hook. So that meant that you could tunnel someone, right? Pandras. You could hook him again, painters. You could tunnel them off, painters. Basically, you got a painters every single time you hook someone, regardless of the order or many times you hook them. That was really brutal, and it made tunneling unbelievably unfair. And it also went really well with pop and so on. Uh, now they've reworked it, and you can still tunnel with it, but obviously you don't get as much upfront benefit, right? The problem with painters now is oh, it's so hard to explain. Um, Are but... you going to say? randomness of your hooks or no, no no that's not the issue obviously it's a scorch hook perk so it can sometimes be very good and sometimes be very bad but overall it's obviously this and that's why it's number one and it's one of the most popular perks um do you want me to go on a super quick rabbit hole or do i give you the long story short what would you prefer i might take one more guess okay is it easier to tunnel with now no it, right now the, the idea with painless now is that you can tunnel a person off Right, you get one scorch hook, but the perk still works after. So after you've tunneled one person off, as long as there's at least one gen left, you can now begin to play a very strong three v one and still have painters and pop painters pop, then pop pop pop. You know, so yeah, painters are still really really good at tunneling, and people that play in tournaments and have the idea of tunneling still run painters, and it works out. It's a really strong perk. The real I think problem that comes from painters is in its perk design, essentially. Okay. Um, because of other changes that they did to other perks that indirectly changed Painters, so not even because of the perk, but because of other indirect changes that we won't get into, when Painters happens, it kicks you off the gen, right? And that activates Deathman Switch, which is a I real, see. it's a real big problem, right? So what do you do when you know a Painters is about to happen? You can quickly get off of the generator, but. And what happens about 7 or 8% of the time when you let go of a generator? You get a For random me, skill check. I get a skill check. You get a random skill check when leaving. So you can have this thing, right? Where you think that there's going to be painters on DMS. So you let go of the gen. You miss a skill check, which you couldn't do anything about. Minus 10. Then painters happens. Minus 25. Then the killer comes. Minus uh, 25 from pop. You know? And that is horrible. So what do you do? Oh, I, I just won't let go of the gen. Okay. So you stay on the gen. Pain just happens. DMS, 30 seconds of blockage. Because you didn't let go. So it puts you into these loose, loose... Like, the design of Pain right now, it's, it's so stupid that they haven't changed this thing about it. it. It all started back here. You know? It started with this, essentially. So Pain is a perk that has been meta, but has had these mechanical or gameplay problems shortly after its release uh, it started with the next chapter we'll get into that but yeah i i think that was bad and let me tell you and i know this is going to sound super dramatic that's not even the worst part about her perks i think personally the worst part about her perks even though it doesn't come into play as often is pentimento pentimento was a perk that before this perk existed survivors could do dual totems and didn't have any risk so if you had an archive to do a dual totem, fine. You had the Nancy perk to do totems and heal, fine, right? Um, stuff like that. After this perk came out, it's now suicidal for survivors to ever do side objectives. Because if you do a totem and the killer has Pentimento, you destroy your team. And it's such a nasty perk for solo players. I find it another really badly designed perk. And the fact that they didn't see a problem with it is just baffling to me. So terrible perks. Uh, unpopular healer, awful map, difficult lore. How do you say this chapter, man? Like third perk is uh, hex pentimento. Oh, 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 oh for okay. artists, no. Um, pentimento, pe pain res, and oh, um, sorry. Ah, not again. Hang on. <laughs> no, no, no. I got it. I got it. I got <laughs> it. It's uh, um, I think it's. <laughs> I just had it right there. What okay. do we have? Um. You're going to tell us? Isn't it another Scorch Hook perk? Oh, no. Hold up. Is it? I believe so. What is it? No. 
you know. Uh, Pentimento. Yep. Um, Your website pen... loads very slowly. I'm sorry. Pain dress. And the final part is. Ta -ta 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 -ta. I forgot about Ah, uh, God. I found it. Grim Embrace. Oh, yeah. Basically, a perk that did absolutely nothing until very, very recently. Yes. It just existed. Mm -hmm. like, it, it was like a flex. It was like a flex perk. Oh, you want to hook everyone? You get a minor benefit. But yeah, there you go. Good you're job. probably not going to do that. Yeah. Now it's a, an annoying, badly designed perk that just kicks you out of a gen and you have to stare at it sometimes. It's weird. Like the, to the go idea... back to Pentimento yeah. really fast, to go back to Pentimento, like pairing it with, I don't know, like plaything or something. Just encouraging people to cleanse if they're not already cleansing, like just random totems or what what have you. It just like extends the game for so long and it's like, uh Do you know how long it takes to do a gen with Pentimento? Like imagine no. that it's a solo team and you're like, oh damn, I can't I can't really take the chance to go and look for the totem. It takes like two minutes to do a gen with Pentimento. Like 122 <sighs> or 128 seconds or something like that. Absolutely disgusting. Disgusting, super sluggish, awful, 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 awful. So I think, yeah, it's a weird, it's a, it's, it's a weirdly designed perk, where teams that are really good and they communicate which totems they did, they can deal with it very nicely, but it also destroys anyone, any team that's not coordinated and does totems out of place. So yeah, uh, we're probably going too far into these perks, but do we still think it's a disaster? <laughs> We've or... spent a long time calling this chapter bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I think it's, I don't know, irredeemable, I guess. I'm sure I'm not. sorry. I'm sure not. But yeah. Uh, next up, Sadako Rising. Could you tell me how Sadako was on release? Um, so on release, Sadako was, not, like her condemn basket was really not threatening at all. It only worked on the TBs that you teleported to. They went on a very long cooldown of, I believe, like 90 seconds or something. So basically, without add-on, Sadako was pretty pathetic at higher levels. Um, and yeah, she was probably one of the hardest killers to get a, to, to, to win consistently with because she had almost nothing in chase, especially without add-ons. However, there were two things that made her a little bit better. This was a map. This was, this was a killer that came with a survivor and not a map, by the way. Um, there were two things that kind of helped her. Number one, she was a stealth killer, right? And that already makes her kind of good. In the statistics, Sadako did very well. She was like number two killer or something at some point. She was very good in statistics because survivors, obviously, at the beginner level, they don't deal very well with stealth. And also, no. the whole condemn thing was a bit confusing for newer players. So they would pick up tapes when they didn't have to and so on and so forth. So they often die to that. Now, at the higher level... Survivors basically knew that it was best to completely ignore TVs because they mostly did nothing. But there was one exception. If you use her iridescent add-on, the videotape, the TV tape, the TVs came back online constantly. So you could t teleport very aggressively. And when you played her like this, she was actually really, really strong. Uh, one Pump Willy, uh, a famous Sadako player, went on like a 200 win streak or 300 win streak doing this. So, so she was... She had contrasts, right? you know? Like, she, she she went from very strong to very weak, very strong, very weak, like, depending on where you look. Overall, I would say, when she came out, the animations were really cool, the, the wow factor, the animations in the lobby were super amazing. Her perks were quite strong without necessarily breaking the game too much. Carl O'Brien, for now, was okay. We will have a change later that will change that, I'm sure you'll remember. But Kyle O'Brien was okay. Uh, Floods of Rage, I think, was awesome. And Merciless Storm was kind of gimmicky and cool, right? So, and Yoichi perks were also pretty inoffensive. Nothing terrible for gameplay. Pretty okay-ish. So that's a recall of everything that happened with Sadako Rising. As far as the perks go, I would just say that they were fine, similar to an earlier chapter. I forget which one. Maybe like uh, the Deathslinger around there. Yeah, yeah, Little okay. Up. Um, like, or, or the like spirit, they're... like, yeah, okay. Like, they're fine, yeah. But, um, 
there's not much really for me to add on her release as opposed to now, I guess, because I actually enjoy her now more than I did back then. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you feel that way or not. I just never play against her. Like I wanna like I wanna learn how to play this killer and how to play against her. I never go against her. So I have no really? idea almost. Yeah. After her work, well, I feel like she's very unpopular, sadly. So yeah. In a nutshell, you're just teleporting nonstop and then just Yeah, yeah I get that. Yeah, she 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 got changed quite a bit. She went through a phase where she was unbelievably strong. They overbuffed her. And now she's a bit more in between where there's you know, and nothing, you know, she's a bit more balanced in all ways. Not bad. I think they've redeemed themselves pretty okay. Uh, if you want to be very dramatic, you could say that her perk, Call of Ryan, would then, would be one of the puzzle pieces that contributed to a much larger problem that will arrive in like three chapters. Oh, I know what you're going yeah, to say. But, you know, that's foreshadowing. Overall, this chapter was pretty awesome. And just seeing the people's reactions and the hype around it and the fact that it also was clearly aimed at the Japanese and, and foreign community. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't because this was based on on a on a film from from Japan. They could have just taken the one from the United States, you know? They could have been right. less faithful. They they went for the more faithful approach, which I think is cool. So Yeah, this actually made me watch Ringo. That's awesome. I loved it. Yeah. yeah. So would you say good impact overall? Or is that too generous? Neutral. For me, it's just... It's very okay for me, but mm -hmm. it's not bad. I just don't see the good in it. I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's fair. All right, I'll 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 go by your call. I'm, I would be inclined okay. to put it in good impact, but if there's a disagreement, then I think neutral is more than fair. Within... Yeah, I think of Yoichi's perks, and I'm just like... Yeah, no, yeah. The, the the survivor Yoichi got, like, three cosmetics, completely forgotten. Nobody plays him for some reason. His perks, they're not, as I, as I said, inoffensive, but also not memorable at all. They could have gotten some love, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely not one of the more memorable chapters, for sure. Uh, but then we go to one of the first um, anniversary chapters that was not licensed. Roots of I... Dredge. I know you do not like the dredge. No, actually, I love the or, dredge. Or, or th there's a very like important part of the dredge that makes you very sad. Oh it's yeah. That whenever you play on certain maps, there are not enough lockers in certain areas. Oh, that's... So when you spawn in, you're like, "Well, that's just... I know how this is going." <laughs> that's just like I'm gonna tell you, dude. In the in there's like a top ten problems with dredge. That's not even in the top three. Maybe <laughs> no, just kidding. But yeah, no, that's definitely one of them. But there's so many problems with Drudge. But maybe maybe we can get into those details a bit later. Um, well, I mean, some people were out of the upset when this chapter was announced. Because they, you know, we came from, let's remember, right? Ghostface, year three. Silent Hill, year four. Resident Evil, year five. Year six? Uh, wait, who's this character? Wait, what's this turkey? Uh, also, I I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but... Hardcore, really cool character, lore-wise, very well written compared to some of the other characters we talked about. A lot of people were just very shallow, and they're like, "Well, she's not the cute kawaii, you know, Japanese character or or you know, typical beauty standard character." So she didn't get much love. Um, sadly, the killer itself had some cool reactions, but also is one of the least popular killers nowadays. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I'll, I'll also quickly criticize that Hattie doesn't really get too many cosmetics in comparison to other survivors, and I'm just yeah. like... Yeah, I don't know I don't know if people don't like her because she doesn't get enough cosmetics, or she doesn't get enough com cosmetics because she's not too popular, or if it's like, uh, you know, was it the chicken or the egg first? I don't know, but it's just... It's sad the other way, yeah, though. It's just sad either way, exactly. And then we had the map that this came with, Garden, Garden of, of Joy. Oh. You love it, don't you? Is there much to say about it? Yeah, like the the map hasn't changed very much. It's changed very little, in fact. It's changed just a little bit, so you don't need to have any speeches. Like the map is just garbage. It's just terrible. Again, when I say generic, I think of buildings like Garden of Joy. It's just it's like window, window. You know, God balance. Like, what else is there to it, really? Oh, you know? okay. Oh, I know one thing. 
Now, one thing about this map that they fixed that was really, really infuriating was the red bushes. Do you remember what happened on Killer's Powers around the red bushes? No. Do, do, okay, so do you remember that this map has a bunch of bushes all around the map with pallets around them and stuff, right? You remember the the, the, the plants, the bushes around the map, more or less. Can you picture Can them you in your mind? Me, what? No. no, I don't remember at all. Uh, you, I mean, you might remember them because they have roots on the ground that are red and they look like scratch marks, which is always easy to, like, mistake. Have you ever noticed that? I can kind of picture that now, yeah. Yeah, well, those bushes on release had unbelievably unfair hitboxes that allowed survivors to go around them very tightly, but made any killer power get stuck. I remember playing in this map so many times, and my friends would make Billy's and Bubba's DC... Because when you chase around it, you were literally invinci invincible. Even if there was no pilot. Like, you, you just run around it. Yeah, and it, okay. And, and the killer could not use their power. If they were anywhere near the bush, they would bump into it. And this Do was... you know what that reminds me of? Yeah. Um, That reminds me of... um, There was an object similar, I think, on the artist map, Eerie of Crows. Yeah. Yeah, no, and it still kind of is there. They try to fix it. Yeah, the the artist of the, the Eerie of Crows has also, like, a lot of plants that you get stuck on. And they haven't really improved that too much still. But yeah, similar, similar issue, but even more exploitable. That was awful. And the, the, there were also some other changes that they've done since that make the map a tiny bit better. So it was even worse than it is now. So really, really bad stuff. Now, the survivor perks, I'm sorry, but mediocre. Mediocrity made into perks. Can you even name the Hadi perks real quick? Putting me on the spot. Yeah. Um, I usually forget terrible perks. Um, or just like boring perks. Okay. Not even one. Uh, residual manifest. Do you remember what it does? You blind the killer and they have a blindness effect to them, regardless of. And you can find a yellow flashlight if you open a chest twice. Wow. Yes. Holy damn. Insane. I don't think the aura reading really matters that much because. <sighs> Most people already know where their generators are, for example, and yeah. I mean hooks are as clear as day once you. I mean, are in okay, range. I mean, I mean, you can make the argument that it can destroy the kill, and it's fine. It's just that this is probably her, one of her best perks, so that already tells you everything you need to know. Very non-impactful, right? Then we had overzealous, which on release was super sad and super garbage. And you and, lose the value whenever you lose a health state. Yes, and then no, the other yeah. perk was um, yeah. inner focus, which shows you the scratch marks of your teammates. Okay. And shows you the auto of the killer when someone takes damage. Like, just, like, nothing incredibly wrong with these perks. Just forgettable. Like, you've never seen anyone run these perks for your last 300 games. And you never will. Like, absolutely forgettable, and they didn't get buffed. And on the killer side, basically the same. Darkness revealed, got completely overshadowed. This solution, kind of a cool gimmick. But, eh. And, oh my god, septic touch. One of the least popular perks in the game, but for a very good reason. Garbage, garbage tier. So really safe, forgettable, badly designed perks across the board. This is sounding like an oof or a disaster. No, it's, it wasn't a disaster because I, 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 let, let's say a few things, okay? The dredge's design, in theory, is very, very good. Very, I think very good. good too. First killer to actually utilize lockers more than like a huntress or a trickster mm -hmm. like you're literally going into them and i think the dredge is a super cool killer with your remnant and whatnot you yeah. know denying the loops as well right like don't you feel like remnant the the remnant is a mechanic that you need to be very precise with that is very susceptible to to like misinterpretations and and and, and being thrown off and it's a subtle chase power right like it's not like in your face move at 300 percent movement speed and insta down I love that. And believe it or not, he, he has one of the best set of add-ons of the game in terms of like variety and what they do. Now, some of these add-ons should be tweaked and varieties changed and some of them should be basic. And as you said, he relies on lockers, which are widely inconsistent, even though they're they're trying to improve that by adding more lockers in some maps, every other patch. But yeah, like it's just a killer that uh, is so close to being really, really good. But then there's yeah, a lot of issues. 
it feels bad, for example, if someone's running towards a locker and you're the dredge, what's yeah. the first thought a newer player is going to think? I can cut them off by going to the locker. You can try, but if they've locked the locker, if they hear you, which you're yeah. very loud, by the way. Yeah, you spend like, what, four seconds breaking it? And if you have a yellow add-on, you save a whole second, which is insane. Why isn't that add-on like half base kit or something? Yeah, um, but yeah, a lot of problems, a lot of problems. Uh, new players are absolutely obliterated by the darkness. It is, oh, yeah. it is super, super terrible for them. And even people that are not new players, if you play on a monitor with sunlight in your room, you don't see anything. I've played in those conditions and you might as well have your monitor turned off. It is so bad. It is a really poorly thought accessibility issue. Uh, I will say that I really do enjoy Nightfall, like at a distance. It, it is very easy to at least see people, uh, for as, me personally. As a killer, you mean? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm saying from the survivor point of view. Oh. Yeah, from no. the survivor point of view, you don't see a thing. No, from the killer point of view, it's okay. Maybe on Ormond, it's weird because everything is white, right? But yeah, for the, from the killer point of view, it's fine. Like, the Nightfall is just horrible on survivors. The killer problem that you don't even realize when you play Dredge is that you emit a, na a noise that is audible from like 30 meters ago, 30 meters away, which is insane. You cannot mind him ever when this, with this killer. No matter what you do, you cannot mind him um, by just moving around. So, yeah. I, I think it's just a killer that is really awesome and has some of the best ideas and some of the best concepts but also he's widely inconsistent. Um, my favorite chase theme also. You like For it? whatever that's worth. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Not among my favorites, but I can respect that. I would say that this chapter brought a lot of cool things, but he's just held back. I, and, and remember the trend that I mentioned earlier of a killer that is really cool, relatively strong, but it's just completely unplay unplayed just because it's too complicated or has too many issues or whatever. I think Dredge falls into that. convoluted. Yeah, I, I think he's... Like, who wants to play him? Like, why would you play him? And then you go to a map with bad RNG and there's three lockers in it. Like, like yeah. no wonder it has like a 2% play rate. Oh, man. Um, I really like this chapter, though. Like, the characters are cool. Everything is nice. Just so many issues. I'm leading towards neutral or oof. I, I think put it in disaster. if we want to be unbiased, if we looked at the perks and they're just forgettable, the map yeah. is... It was a disaster. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's just how it is, really. Yeah. Yeah, pretty bad. Uh, now let's spice that back with some goodness. Resident Evil 2 Wesker <laughs> Boogaloo. We have... A bugged killer on release. Yeah, okay. On release, Wesker had some issues. But, I mean, to their credit, only a few of them still are in the game. <laughs> uh, to their credit... After a while, it was mostly playable, right? And it wasn't like the other Resident Evil chapter where everything broke. The game was functional. Yeah. Um, good, bad. It also fixed RPD by splitting it into two maps. Now they're still yeah. terrible, but less so. And it also brought a lot of newer players, which is exactly what the Nemesis chapter did. So mm -hmm. we have, you know, double the fun. I'm, I'm always yeah. like, that's always that's players. always a good thing. And is it fair to say that Wesker was the most popular killer ever? Yeah, I think he is. He still has a lot of love. Like yeah. he's a very he, he's a comfort pick. That's what I always yeah. call him. For yeah, people. he he is as strong as strong killer should be, but no stronger. Add-ons that for the first time in forever are not insanely powerful. They didn't make an add-on to give him three. Like they didn't make an add-on to give him three down uh, three bounds. Or an add-on to make him 20% faster. Like, all of these things that they used to do on Spirit, on Blight, on, on so many killers. They learned not to do that. Awesome. So, a killer that is mostly fair, fun to play as, and, oh my god, actually somewhat fun to play against. Most people would yeah, concede. I, I don't even think it's the biggest deal in the world if, like, Wesker starts you off um, infected. It's like, okay, well, fine first day. Yeah, you know, I mean, some rough yeah, edges. But... Like, I'm sure no one enjoys being tunneled and not being even able to get the vaccine off. I mean, I get that. Like, that's... No, no one likes that, right? But no. o other than that, like, let's be honest, like, o overall, pretty functional. The survivors, cute. The perks, at least some good ones on both sides. Reassurance also, I think, had a really positive impact in the camping uh, part of the game. And push 
people oh, away yeah. from that. Dude, this chapter almost had it all. If it like it didn't bring a new great map, but it fixed an old one that was honestly terrible and made it a little bit better. A little bit. It had its issues, but you know. Um How do you feel about the perks? Like Ada, for example, I believe is wiretap, yeah. low profile. Uh, low profile and reactive healing. Although I okay. think the perks are just good to average. Like Wesker, despite being really popular, none of his perks are meta, but all of them are usable at one point or another. You know? Uh, like, again, not the most memorable perks, but Awakened Awareness is pretty okay. Uh, Terminus is okay on a few killers. Um, Superior Anatomy? It, yeah, it's it's like, like I don't not my favorite type of perk, but I mean, you see it. It's fun, you know? Yeah. And yeah, no, I, I would think the perks, they don't strike me as like, oh, best design ever, dude. Wonderful stuff, but also as good as it gets without being terrible, like, or being overpowered. I, I think really, really good. Uh, Honestly, and in my head, if I take away the fact that RPD is just still RPD, for better or for worse, I think this chapter is actually very good. Wesker is a fun killer. Yeah. Very accessible for people. They don't have to be the best, most competitive no, Wesker in the world. No, no, it's, and at the same time, if they are very good, you can see that. Yeah. It's a killer that's comfortable, to, as you said, for people of all skill levels. And that's it's really hard to pull off. Would you and put... the survivor perks are fun and niche. So I really do think it's a good, if not great, chapter. Do we give do. it? Do we give? Do we grant it the title of great impact? Has this council decided, or is it just top of good? I am guilty of using perks like reactive healing because I love it. So ah, honestly, let's, let's give it a great. Put it next to the other Resident Evil chapter. Is that let's fair? Do it. Yeah, I, yeah. All right. Now, fortune fog. My goodness. I think this is probably not for <laughs> funny. <laughs> I think this is objective, maybe not objectively, but very close to it. Everyone's like least favorite chapter. I mean, I'm going to give a great impact because it did feel like a hit in the head from like a metal club. You know what I mean? <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, one. this can, can we give it a starting rating of disaster? Yes. Uh, why? Like AI. Why? People hate it that the night has been bugged. Okay. Okay, we're, bug? We're... I'm not sure. <laughs> no, 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 no. He has, he has. He, he's had bugs that have been in the game since his release. Some visual, some that affect gameplay in pretty significant ways, and some that are, you know, those bugs that you think is this even a bug or a feature? We don't even know. You know. So actually, yeah. can I go from pro to con here? Yeah. I think the knight is a really cool killer. Like the design of the knight, awesome, hundred percent, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I don't think I can say anything else. Um, Unfortunately, I, I don't like the map. Uh, it was worse on release. Oh, it was like oh, it was really bad on release. It was terrible. It was more red than it is now. If you can even believe unnecessarily, that. Unnecessarily, yeah. Yeah, it was bigger than it is now. It had more fillers than it is now. When it released on the live servers, it was bugged and had approximately double the amount of pallets that it should. It was the only map in DVD history where I lost more often than I won. According really? to the statistics that one of my viewers gathered, yeah. I was like, taking it was... a small break during the time, so like this is new information to me. Yeah, no, it was it was really really bad. Um, now the perks, eh? We have perks that just that just get outflanked by other perks. They they're ultimately not too relevant. Like, you know what I mean? Like if you want info, no one really played with of. Uh, with fuck wise, if you wanted information on the survivors and auto read, not a lot of people run face the darkness. And arguably, face the darkness is a perk that can be problematic or, or or a bit of a difficult perk to balance for killers like pig. What if you scream, you can die to your traps, kind of right? Annoying, yeah. Yeah. Uh, then on the killer side, we had nowhere to hide, which I think was a horrible addition. It was, really, yeah. I'll tell you why. Uh, first of all. Compared to the average info perk, it has no cooldown. It follows the killer around, which is incredibly good on Nurse, Blight, all these strong killers. It stacks with lethal, so these two factors kind of combine. And it also was a piece of the puzzle that completed the thing that we're going to talk about. Can I uh, possibly change your opinion just a little bit? Okay. 
I love chasing unique survivors, you know, chase one, chase a, a new survivor, chase another new survivor with nowhere to hide when I use it. it Maybe helps. I can find the person that's been, you know, hiding and I, I just want a new chase at that point. I think that that's absolutely lovely and I support you in your fair play adventure. But let me but remind you, that way. let me remind you, this was around the time when the developers did the meta perk shakeup. Eruption from Nemesis got reworked into into 25 seconds of making survivors incapacitated. Calibrine was as strong as ever. Nowhere to Hide just came out, which was basically the final Thanos power stone in the gauntlet. And then there was also Pop and yeah, and so on. Is so, incapacitated still an effect in the game right now? Uh, yes, but it's only applied by victor until they rework him and by a certain add-on from the huntress but other than that that's yeah. bad then yeah so basically around this time killers had this obsessive thing with kicking generators and all of the per basically it was better for you to kick generators forever than it was to chase people it was generally more effective to kick generators because they would just die it was like a war of attrition it was one of the most hated metas in the history of this game. People missed the old ruin and dying during this, which is insane to think about. So yeah, like, and, and this new perk, Nowhere to Hide, solidified it. It also was incredibly strong on Nurse and still is. Um, so yeah, and the reason why everyone runs Distortion nowadays and stuff, it just started with this, in my opinion. And then the map, yeah, terrible. The killer, awesome design, but super buggy, super troublesome. On the PTB, he was garbage. On release, he was still bugged. To this day, he's extremely add-on dependent. His add-ons are designed so badly. His power has so many holes. Oh, for every cool thing, there are three issues and three problems. Um, yeah, dude. Mm. How do you, what, tell me, what's, what's good in this? I guess like the best thing we can say about the knight is the knight has his three guards, you know. Mm -hmm. Specifically for certain things, like if you want to break a pallet pr practically immediately, you know, you send your Carnifex, boom, like at the right time and whatever. And you have your Jailer and Assassin for, you know, the chasing, uh, patrolling, whatever. Like, that's cool and all, but just still AI, I feel like he's probably not the most interactive killer in the world for survivors to play against, and that's a big issue. Yeah, when, when also, he Also, we, we totally ignored his third perk, which I assume is just irrelevant, Hubris. Hubris strikes me as Horther, you know, like Horther is a perk from the twins that punishes survivors for opening chests, which is already like the dumbest thing that a survivor can do. And Hubris makes a survivor insta-downable if they stun the killer. Why? Shouldn't they want to stun the killer? Isn't that like a good thing? Shouldn't that be like a... Shouldn't you like be rewarded for doing that? I feel like it's unfair. I've come to appreciate it a little bit more because honestly, hubris with a few killers is actually kind of fun. Like, there's a few gimmicks around it. So I, I've come to appreciate it a little bit more just for the novelty of it. But I do think that at its core, it's just a weirdly designed perk. And it's yeah, like, okay, bad perk design, I thought mm -hmm, so. Mm -hmm. So yeah, weird, weird, weird. Uh, is it enough to make it a disaster? What do you think? You know, this is coming from someone that absolutely loves the knight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I just just the gen kick meta alone. Let me tell you. Um, we've talked before about some situations, right, where it was loose loose. This was probably the worst. You go to a generator in the middle of the map. You start doing that generator. You're not sure if the killer has kicked it. You're not sure if your teammates are being chased, right? We. I don't think we like we were around now getting the hot elements, but we might have not gotten them yet. Nope. So you didn't know if your teammates were being chased always. So then your teammate goes down instantly, and that triggers eruption, and now for the next 25 seconds, you cannot heal, you cannot do gents, you cannot do anything. 25 seconds. It was really, really unfun. Uh, in a survivor friends, you could tell each other, hey, I'm going down. Then they let go of the gen, and the perk did basically nothing. So it was a really unfair perk. Really unfun, really unfair. And that was only one of the styles of kicking gents forever. Terrible, terrible. And it became worse with the next chapter. You want to get into it or? The tools of torment. Do we Do we even, do, do I even dare to put this chapter anywhere above this line of disaster? <laughs> well, I like going pros and cons for certain chapters, especially this one. Okay, pros. I think the pros of this chapter are 
I like the chase theme. That's it. I don't even like it too much myself. Sorry, oh. man. That's it. No pros. I don't think I can say anything else. Um, Talita is cute. People love her. And Renato is an autistic character. Autistic representation. Hey, whatever. And there's two survivors. I mean, it, it really doesn't help that they, they have like one or two good perks between the two of them. Especially on release. But yeah. Um, Which do we cover first? The Skull Merchant? Let's talk about the survivors because I feel like that's quicker. There's less to talk okay. about. I think that the perks are, while they're very unique, are like... It, it's like the developers, unfortunately, ask you to solve a calculus equation just to make some perks work. Yeah, yeah. For a little bit. Yeah. And it's like, cool, the teamwork perks are here, but if you split too far apart, if you yeah. break your ankle, you know, you don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's background player that we already know about. Background player now is very strong, but back then it was pretty okay. It was okay. Uh, on the PTB, well, it was, it was one of the worst perks in the game. Uh, one of the worst design perks in the game. Do you remember what he did in the PTB? No. Whenever you unhooked another survivor, you gained a speed boost. You, not the survivor, you. You get a massive speed boost. So basically, it was like, a, oh, I'm going to unhook you, and I'm going to get the hell out of here so that the killer goes for you instead of me. It was a such a backwards perk. It was like, what do you want the killer to do? To just tunnel? Like, it was obviously really, really bad. So they reworked it into what it is now, but it didn't give you a 200% movement speed. That came some months later. And I think that that honestly is a bit of a problem these days, but another debate for another day, maybe. Where yeah, do we go from here? Uh, overall, the perks on the survivor side completely forgettable even the perks on the killer side forgettable do you remember what they are do you remember one perk from the top of your head i think i remember them bud yeah thwack because it doesn't do anything yeah thwack <laughs> probably her best perk garbage leverage garbage and i mean to be fair the perk to switch the obsession uh game of food okay that one's gimmicky i think it's a really strange perk really strange perk but whatever sure you know can make some builds funny i guess I would personally just wouldn't cry if they removed it from the game completely, but whatever. So yeah, Correct the... me if I'm wrong on this one as well. Did they change Shelter Woods with the release of the Skull Merchant? Yeah, okay. yeah. Instead of getting a new map, they took a map that was honestly really boring and really dull, and they reworked yeah. it so to, to so that it had some Skull Merchant themes. That was good. That was good. Yeah, that I don't mind really it. Good. It had been the same for so long, pretty much. Yeah. Honestly, that is the best part about this chapter. That was a good change. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Good impact then. <laughs> no, just kidding. It's still terrible. The main reason it's terrible is because the killer... I mean, it's still a problem, but especially on release, she was absolutely horrible. Horrible to play against. What did you... I don't about? remember her on release. I only know of her now. Okay, well, I'll, I'll refresh your memory. You tell me if you remember. Uh, she set drones in areas that basically did not need line of sight. It was just like a boon, right? It just affected you. And you became exposed over time. And essentially, the, her idea, the best way to play this killer was to find three gens that were relatively close, set a drone on each of them. The drones had add-ons that made you oblivious or made her undetectable or all kinds of other things, right? Uh, or worse, they made the skill checks harder. So you would have a killer that would constantly, even though they nerfed eruption, the one we talked about earlier, uh, by the release of this chapter, I wonder why, uh, you had a killer that could go gen to gen, kicking, 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 occasionally downing you, and sometimes not even hooking you, just bleeding you out on the ground. If they didn't hook you, they didn't have to worry about wasting time, and you could not put a drone next to a hook, right? So you just, like, you would go against people that would defend three gens for literally an hour until the server crashed, or for 45 minutes until they one bled out. One of the least interesting, most unhealthy, not even like S tier powerful, but S tier boring and people disconnecting against types of types of killers that we had ever seen. Possibly the worst design killer in DVD history by some metrics. I don't know how, but I somehow forgot about her exposing survivors. Yeah, that was the initial. Then they changed her into being a bit different. Now, well, they changed her a couple of times, but what we have now, she doesn't expose survivors. She instead injures you, and then slows you down. And she's she's far less problematic than before, and doesn't have the you same... You think so? Yes. 
And I actually think my... the opposite. Oh, okay, well, I mean, one, uh, let's agree on one thing. Three genning now is a dead strategy. Or at least long term. Because if you kick gens forever, they have now made a new measure that came as a result of this thing where a killer cannot kick a gen too many times. After a certain limit, eight times, the, the gen just doesn't take any more damage to avoid right. being held hostage, basically, right? So, um, boy, I think the Skull Merchant is just more problematic now. Why? Because it just, like, it, it's brought to my attention that this is a killer that does things that other killers do, except better, and then a lot at once. You have oh, your yeah. undetectable, you have your haste, you have your hinder, you have... She's very quiet, by the way. Yeah. Survivors yeah, no, playing around your drones. Yeah. Like, it pretty much slows them down to play around your drones. There are no repercussions for your drones being um, disabled yeah. because you can just recall yeah. or recall it and mm -hmm. there's another one. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, no, no. Like, people have a really difficult time grasping how to play. It's just easy to play ass. That's it's one thing really that people realize. Like I've seen, I've heard from people that play as this killer with very little killer experience, and they kick ass, because she's easy to play as. But the counterplay is very unintuitive. She can inflict basically every status effect at once, sometimes by default, sometimes with add-ons, right? And it's super confusing because her speed changes subtly. You don't know what you're supposed to do. Uh, it's all you need to keep an eye on the map, and people generally dislike that. People dislike playing against Trapper and having to look out for traps. In my experience, I don't know if you agree. So, and this is even worse. You get you see people get injured and play really badly. I think some of it is justified. Some of it is just laziness. Uh, I don't think she's as bad as before, just because the games don't last forty five minutes anymore. Thank God. But she's still well, problematic. And yeah, you're also of the opinion that too many haste effects are problematic too, though. So, for example, let's say that I get tagged by a drone and the skull merchant is hasted now. Yeah. And if we can, if we continue to have these haste effects and perks and add-ons and everything, then it's just like, how do you know exactly what's going on, you know? Yeah. No, you are at a loop where your experience tells you that you can vault it safely. But no, you cannot because she moves... 12% faster. Why is it 12% faster? Because she has a perk and she has an add-on and she has this base kit and she has this other thing and you don't see that at a glance. It's the same as when, well, we'll talk about that in the next chapter, when survivors had a certain perk that made them faster. But yeah, uh, tough, tough, tough chapter. It has had, like the killer basically has been a problem ever since she came out. She, They had to make new mechanics to counter, to, to basically nerf her. And they've reworked her now two and a two two and a half times, and it's she's still a problem, and people still hate her. It's kind of like Trickster, where they tried to get him right, and they failed, but way way worse, way way worse. I think a proper disaster. Do we agree? Yeah, I think we agree that that's a great impact. <laughs> Is there anything else to say? No, not at all. End transmission. Another anniversary chapter. And another chapter that was not licensed. People were expecting a license again. It came with the Tobal Landing map, uh, Gabriel Soma, and the Singularity. What are my thoughts? What are your thoughts? My thoughts are, I think the Singularity is the best killer they've ever made. Because very unique. Mm -hmm. Super cool voice lines. Just feels really rewarding to play. Very, really um, confusing, I'm sure, for newer players even mm -hmm. more. But you feel very good when you down people and you kill people. Um, you're constantly I doing really... something. Like you're always. Yeah. Like, you're. Yeah. It, it's really challenging, and it's really engaging for people that like it. Uh, Would you agree with me, however, that this killer also has a bit of the artist syndrome, where he's very strong, he's very cool, he's pretty powerful, kind of skill ceiling, but because he's a bit hard to play. And other killers are just simpler and sometimes stronger or simpler and stronger. Nobody seems to play him. I, I think that's exactly why he's at the bottom of the pick rates. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Among the least played characters. Even like every now and then I play against a singularity and they kick my ass. They're really, really good. But just every now and then you just don't see. It's not popular. No. Uh, and it's a shame because yeah. so like well, to me, it was so well designed. I really do enjoy the singularity. Uh-huh. Um, um the landing not so much it, I, I feel weird 
considering the fact that the map released with a killer that I hate being on as the singularity. Oh, you, it wasn't you a good map way? for him. No. I have to yeah, say, though, they, they changed this map sometime after release, and now it's a lot more open. Now it's a lot better. But on release and on the PTB, this map was super cluttered, and everything was red and, and colorful and, and offensive to the eyes. It was not great. It was at this time that the developers really understood that we hate clutter, and we hate loops that have all of these unpredictable things around them, you know? So, yeah, they probably started taking notes after this. I would say the survivor is probably really unpopular. His skins are very, you know, I, I think he's uh, not very relatable. I don't see him very often. Oh. Um, no, sadly. He's kinda, it, it's just kind of random, yeah. I guess for a game like Dead by Daylight, per se. Yeah. But, I mean, they, they did go into a unique direction with science fiction. So, hey, cool, right? I think this is a pretty successful unique character you know new non-licensed i like it i like the story i like everything about it that's pretty cool uh now uh decent characters but not super appreciated a uh, bit of a dot map that got a bit better over time i think it's okay-ish but you know but now we get to the perks some of the worst design perks I think I can... oh it's got to be made for this oh but not even made for just every perk this chapter was so poorly designed. It was, and what they did to fix each of them is just almost worse. Oh, I, oh you know, so bad. I can't think of the singularity's perks. Force, machine force hesitation, machine learning, oh God. force hesitation, and oh the man. one that exhausts you, genetic limits. All of them are either useless or unbelievably mean and unnecessary and do not promote any healthy or, or, or proper gameplay in the slightest. On the killer side, so all glad. of them are failure, in my opinion. I'm so glad someone else agreed. It forced hesitation, I think, might be, if not the most problematic perk in the game. Because I use it for fun. Like, yeah. it, it's nice, but... Yeah, I don't know. It's if like... you're playing really mean, yeah. and you down the person saving... And, like, what's the unhooked person supposed to do? Like, where are they going exactly? So, so the idea of this perk, I guess, in their head, was like, oh, if survivors group up and you down one of them, the other one gets slowed down so you can get more hits and more pressure. But in reality, survivors don't group up for anything other than unhooks most of the time. So this perk gets used or, or, or taking protection hits for someone that, you know, that's being tunneled or something. I so this another... perk is basically a, I want a tunnel, get out of my way. Yeah, and it doesn't even it doesn't even stop like background player, for example. It's just a weird perk. No, no, no. I've it's... had people just like rush in my face. I'm like, well, blind me, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's a really strange perk. And it's super it, it, like if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And if it works, it feels unfair. I don't like it. And then the other two perks are honestly just useless. Uh, machine learning is visible to the survivors and gives you a bit of a speed boost, but it's too hard to set up. And then there's another perk that gives a 30 second, a 30 second exhaustion timer on survivors if they heal. And the idea, I guess, was that this perk existed to counter Made for This, which was an exhaustion perk on release. Now, Made for This was a perk from Gabriel. What did it do and why was it an issue? I believe it gave a 3% haste, I want to say, yeah, just I, for being injured alone. Anytime you were injured, yeah. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. You just run faster. Yeah. I mean... And... It had another... Those... It, but that wasn't pretty much it, because on top... Like, that alone would make it a decent perk. Very decent perk. But it had a secondary effect, where if you heal someone else, you would also be able to tank a hit. Which I think is still very good, by the way. Oh yeah, that part that part of the perk still remains, and it is a good effect. But that that's two great perks into one, while many other characters have zero good perks. That was, I felt that so gross, and the whole haste thing was just so unpleasant. <sighs> I'm not a like huge balance guy when it comes to the game, but one thing that I never truly understood is, and actually kind of dislike slash almost even hate. Why bring a perk into the game that you don't have to do anything with and re reward you for it? I wasn't really a fan of... Like, just be injured and then you're you're hasted. Yeah, I mean, just I mean you could say the same thing about resilience, right? Is resilience a problem? I don't think so. Like, I, I would say 
it's not like that's a part of it that made a made a lot of, made a lot of people upset, right? You get a you get a haste without having to work for it. I think the problem was the fact that number one, if you played against a cheater now, you would never really been able to know. There were so many different speeds. Like the fact that we started to have subtle speed differences means that if you were cheating, you would get away with anything. It would be very difficult for anyone to know. Uh, another problem, it stacked with hope. Nothing less fun than chasing a survivor that is consistently 110 in the end game. Well, I, I did a zag. I still remember that. <sighs> Miserable. Absolutely. Everyone stopped running adrenaline and everyone started running hope with this perk. And it was. <sighs> Let's be honest, if you're playing nurse, you probably don't care, but. It was just miserable, man. For the weaker killers that are slow, it was miserable. But either way, even though they fixed it in like six months or whatever, like it was just bad design, I think. Just not very good for either side to have a perk like that. And then there was another perk that on the PTB gave you a second free toolbox called Scavenger. Mm. And that, that wasn't right. That perk was insane. Not in terms of, like, being the strongest perk on the game, but basically in terms of, like, making strong toolboxes, which were already really good, just get a second one for free. I, I thought that perk had to had to change. And I made a video about it, and people still roast me to this day, thinking I got the perk nerfed. The perk was changed into now being one of the weirdest perks in the game. It's not terrible. It's usable. But it's so weird. It completely, completely out of, uh, out of uh, use. It's completely irrelevant. It feels. Isn't it kind of like a built to last, but a toolbox in a yeah. way? Yeah. So okay. basically, you need to hit five skill checks after losing a toolbox. And then you have a period where you get the toolbox back, but you're slower on gens. What? Why? So that means go do something else and then get back on the generator later. Yeah. Yes. You can also stay on the gen and use your toolbox and it's still faster than normal. Or you can use it to sabo or something. Like, like there's some utility to it. And if you know how to use it perfectly, it can be okay. But the problem is, they went from making a, peg, a perk that was kind of brainless and super powerful into making a perk that's just too complicated and no one will ever use. And the problem was that they needed to address toolboxes. Back then, the strongest toolboxes, I mean, they still kind of do, they could save you like 25 seconds on a gen. Getting two of them for free, that's 50 seconds. And multiple survivors could do this. Like, why? Like, why did anyone think that, that was okay? Uh, so yeah, that was a terrible, terrible, terrible perk. And the third perk? Uh, troubleshooter. That perk was perfectly fine. No problem with that. Oh yeah, I love Troubleshooter. Troubleshooter is okay. Troubleshooter, good design, doesn't mess with anything too strong, doesn't last forever, doesn't have weird requirements. Good perk, perfect. Keep it as is. But yeah. Um, everything about this chapter was lukewarm. Anything good overshadowed by some of these perks that were weird design and stuff and had to be changed. Does it, do you think it just cancels itself out to be neutral? I think it does, honestly. I do. All Based right. off of everything that you added at the end. Yeah. All right. Then we move on to the real start of the anniversary, the Nicolas Cage chapter. No map, no killer, just one survivor with a few skins and three very unique perks. One that makes you scream, one that makes you run, and sometimes there's an extra effect, and one that allows you to down yourself on the ground silently. What do we think of this chapter? I think this is the best chapter in the game. Just, I <laughs> I wouldn't go as far, but I think this chapter was really? awesome. Yeah, no, I think this chapter is great. Um, I, I really think it's the best because behavior has, at this point, made three very unique perks, to me at least. Mm -hmm. um, dramaturgy, you know, you run for a little bit, you get a random effect of being exposed, getting an item, or um, I think... Yeah, you, you can scream, get extra speed, get an item, or become exposed and instantaneable. Okay. It's one of those four. Plot twist. We know what that does. You know, you drop down and you pick yourself up and get haste, if, or rather sprint first, small one, for a little bit. And um, scene partner, which is you scream and then you see the killer. If you scream again, then you see the killer for like another two seconds or something like that. Mm -hmm. Which I think is hilarious. It's and funny. Again, it's still funny. They're three unique perks. I don't think they make a lot of people upset that I've ever seen. No, per se. no. Like the only, only, only thing you could argue is that plot twist and like at the higher level, plot twist has been known to be very problematic because some yeah. because it basically makes it a hundred percent consistent that you can down yourself on a pallet 
and put the killer in a lose-lose situation with background player and other stuff. It's a bit out there. Um, but if you if you follow me, basically, the idea is that if a survivor can choose where to down themselves in the current landscape of perks, that does come with some issues. Uh, I think that's fair, fair, fair to address. But overall, I agree with you. Three unique perks, really fun. For the most part, not problematic. For the most part, pretty balanced. And they rarely get that right. They rarely do fun perks that are actually useful and, and fun. They typically make fun perks that are worthless. Um, I, I can't really yeah. speak about how much player base this brought to the game, but I think it was a really good chap like mini chapter. I do as well. Um, anything else that you remember? Does this just go into a good? And leave it I there? think. I think good because it's only a survivor. I love the perks, but yeah, I'd say good. Not okay. necessarily great though. All right. Now we have Alien. Some people call this the biggest license to come to the game. I don't know if that's true, yeah. but it was a pretty big one. And I think quite unexpected, honestly, at this point. Especially coming after the other uh, sci-fi chapter, the um, end transmission. This was unexpected. And it was a very, very impressive looking adaptation. Great animations, great models. They didn't get the likeness of uh, Sigourney Weaver for the cat, for the survivor, uh, but you know, otherwise beautiful, like presentation, beautiful. Do we agree with that or? Yeah. I um, love the Xenomorph skins. I think the Xenomorph is awesome to play. I, um, I love them myself. Yeah, it just feels rewarding as well to actually hit your tail attacks and whatnot. Nothing really comes to mind when I think of cons, but I'm also like slowly going through the perks right now. And I think, okay, yeah, go, go on. I, I love your opinion. Um, no, I just wanted to say, this isn't something that I feel too much on my own uh, person, but some people think that this killer has started its own little trend of killers that are basically uncounterable in chase. Once they get close to you and their cooldown is off or whatever, you're going to get hit no matter what. Is that something you agree with? Do you think that's a problem in design that he's just too unavoidable? I mean, on release, his tail had basically no cooldown, but they did fix that pretty quickly. I think that you are screwed in most cases, yes. But I don't find that really problematic because turrets do exist if your teammates are placing them in actual, you know, decent spots and whatnot. Yeah. But they're not necessarily going to save your life, and I get that. Yeah, they're just but... delaying a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I do like that. I do like that you have to play against this killer a bit, you know. Like, other killers they set up, like Hag or Trapper or Skull Merchant, but this is the killer where you need to set up traps. And I do like that. That's fairly unique. And that's cool, right? And I think I it's think more interesting that. than the EMPs from the Singularity. So I do like that. I, I agree with you, actually. I don't think it's a huge deal that the killer is quite oppressive in Chase. They're clearly not oppressive enough to be S tier or anything like that. So I do like it. I would like your opinion on Nostromo landing or Nostromo. Um, yeah, Nostromo, Nostromo wreckage, I think it's called. Okay. Um, I feel like the map is very barren, no? It's weird. I think it's one of the first maps that they made where my first thought was like, all right, like I see how survivors can delay you quite a bit, but I also don't think this map is super good for them. There's no insane window. Like, think of an insane window in this map. Where is it? Eh. Like, every now and then you get two windows close to each other. Uh, they're a bit weird RNG, but yeah. They also have this thing where they use unique jungle gyms that are super confusing. So, the, the map is weird. More more, more so than Killer's Head or Survivor's Head. The map is weird and has a lot of weird quirks. Uh, I did, I really did like the, the inclusion of the Easter eggs. There's like two or three around the map. The cat in the locker the face hugger that splashes on the window, the yeah. the key that you can open a secret chest with. Those things are really cool. And it showed a lot of love and the animations, like a lot of love went into this chapter. And the craziest part, the craziest, craziest part is that even though on almost every score and every metric, this was a good chapter, people didn't seem that excited about it, and people were very unhappy around this time. Do you remember that? No, and I would wonder why, honestly. I don't know, but I had the feeling that people were like, eh, whatever, yeah, L chapter, whatever, eh, you know, 
not playing DVD, taking a break. Like, I, I felt like people were not that excited about this chapter for That's a some shame. reason. Yeah. This, this chapter made me watch Alien and Aliens, by the way, which I had never seen before. Did you enjoy them? Yeah, they were awesome. Yeah, I like the first film a lot. Uh, yeah, honestly, I would give it a good impact. Uh, the perks, let's be honest. Uh, we have Chemical Rapid. Trap, which is basically not that good against the Strongest Killers, but it's a fun perk, it's a fun concept. Then Ultimate Weapon, which I think is super, super, super dumb. Yeah, I think Ultimate Weapon is the worst perk in the game. Yeah. And then... Because it's very lazy the way that it was implemented. Open a locker, find people. It's like, uh, okay. I mean, I, I'd go on forever, but it's just a perk that basically destroys other information perks. It single-handedly made Survivor start to run the perk Calm Spirit, which they didn't run ever before because it's a terrible perk. It's really, really bad in my opinion, like for the health of the game. And we're still dealing with that. They're still reworking Ultimate Weapon, and it's probably going to have to need another rework, maybe. I, I don't know. I believe so. Yeah. Uh, some other perks, though, that were, that were pretty cute. Light Food was okay. Uh, Lucky Star, I think, is a cool design. Um, we then have... Um, Rapid Brutality. I, and... I don't love that perk. For the same. No? No, no. I mean... At least it's the kind of perk that you run on weaker killers, which is good, right? It's not a perk that you're on nurse, so that's nice. Uh, I do think I would have never designed that perk. I think it will make problems in the future. The way this perk is balanced, other than its duration, is the fact that it removes your blood loss. What if one day they want to remove blood loss altogether? How are they going to balance this perk? Uh, whatever. I don't know. I feel like it's weird, weird design. But, yeah. And Alien Instinct, the final perk, is just pretty mediocre, but whatever. It's fine. Uh, so yeah, pretty average, pretty okay perks overall. Maybe some one of them that might do problems. But I, I don't think that ch changes the fact that it was a good license, good adaptation, good character, overall good impact, or neutral, if we were being pessimistic. Do you feel that way? I think it's good. Yeah. I really do like the chapter too, honestly. Yeah. I just wish people had been more enthusiastic about it. We then have Chucky. I'd say uh, I think this is the most disappointing chapter ever. Really? Okay, no new map, yeah. right? No new survivor. It's just a little paragraph with Chucky and Tiffany and 300 voice lines in total. Uh, perks that were not super problematic overall. Okay, some of them, they feel a bit pointless, but whatever. Um, but you didn't like it. Tell me about it. Just really disappoint. There was a lot of hype behind the chapter, and then when it comes out, it's just kind of like... Meh, I guess like the coolest thing is having a killer in third person. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, really, that's the only thing that particularly comes to mind. He's got his scamper and whatever. And is he doing anything different? You know, Heidi Ho. Yeah, he's... there's, there's. I mean, on release, he could do cool flicks and stuff, which I enjoyed. They, yeah, they, they patched that away. I think the gameplay on Chuck is really, it's, it's kind of, it reminds me of Spirit in the sense that it's really fun to play as. But when you play against them, it's like, okay, 20 seconds, and cooldown is off, and I get hit. Okay, 20 seconds, okay, cooldown is off, and I get hit, nothing I can do about it. Like, it exactly. feels like you're on a timer, and there's not a lot of, like, once the timer is over, your your, your time is up. Uh, that's how, how it feels. I understand it's not the most fun to play against. I do think, though, that it's a great adaptation. The voice lines, the animation, the, the way they rigged a third person around it, the fact that this was the chapter where they introduced the field of view for all the killers. Oh, so good. Like, that was so nice, I think. Or maybe that came in the next one. I'm not too sure. But, yeah. I still think they are a little disappointing because I think of the community's response to this chapter. They were very hyped for it. And then once it came out and it was shortly changed after, like you said, everyone just kind of moved on. Do you see Chucky that often? Because I, I really it's, don't. Apparently, they released the statistics today for killers. He's in the top five most played killers. Really? Yeah. I, I know that you feel that way. And I, I think it's going to be similar to what I said about the alien, where I felt that people didn't like it, but maybe I was wrong. I do I do feel like alien nowadays, you'd never see a xenomorph, which is a bit sad. Really? You never, yeah, I don't see them ever, almost. So that's sad. But I think Chucky is actually fairly popular still, apparently. I, I do like Chucky and Tiffany for especially like the voice lines. I think they're hilarious. Oh, yeah. and... and there's a lot of them. A lot there of are, yeah. like you play, you keep playing this killer. You hear a new one every now and then. It's really, really yeah. I saw you get blinded as Tiffany, and I, I was lurking, and I heard her say like, "Ah, 
eyes. I was like, huh? <laughs> That's really funny. Awesome. Anyway, I, I personally really like it. I think it was a good adaptation. It didn't really bring any... Like, okay, compared to some of the other chapters that we talked about, what is the disaster that Chucky brought? Like, some people might not find his gameplay super fun, but no disaster. I think it was a pretty good chapter. I would say good impact. Other you... than him being very small, which I'm sure people adapted to. Mm -hmm. Is it fair to call him good impact, or do we disagree and put him in neutral? Because that... That can be done. I, I have to let you choose. Well, I last do. time, last time we were with your take. This time, I guess we'll go with mine. We'll put him in good impact. I do think that he probably brought quite a few eyes on the game, and ultimately, for a license, I think that's good. I think having a license that doesn't break the game is already good, considering some of the licenses that did break the game. You know, though. Funnily enough, now that we look at it. Yeah, all of the disaster chapters were original. Funny how that works, huh? <laughs> uh, back That's into disappointing. another license that we have Alan Wake. Thoughts, prayers? Oh, what do I even say about Alan Wake? Um, it's just the survivor. I've never played the game yet, so... I'm so sorry, I don't want to interrupt you. Um, it also came with the Nights Out game mode. You remember that? That was like part of the promotion of the chapter. The, the oh, dark... it did, it did. That was right. cool. What do you think of the think whole package? I, okay, so I think that game mode was very good for paving the way for other future game modes like My Little Oni recently, mm -hmm. which I thought was fun. Um, Lights Out, though, I thought it was... um, What's the word I'm looking for here? Uninspired? Like a novelty? Yeah. Yeah, you just kind of strip the content away from people and... Just make them play in darkness. I thought it was okay for one game for me, and then I never played it again. Okay. Uh, I think, I mean, it's a single survivor. I think the voice actor was the one from the game. Great job. The voice lines were good. They also got some skins from other characters, which is appreciated, you know. Um, beautiful character with perks that are okay-ish. I think they could be a bit better, but they're okay-ish. They... They changed some things without breaking anything too much, I think. So I would just give it a good impact on the sense alone that it's a license. Even though if Can't it was if it was original, this would be the most forgettable chapter ever. But the maybe perks just being sorry, the perks being champion of light, elimination, yeah. boon elimination. And then another one called Deadline that makes your skill checks harder, but less punishing, oh. and this and that. Yeah, it's back to what you said. They're not game-breaking perks. They're just like they exist. And if you want to somehow make them work, you can try. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think they're fine. Yeah. Do, do you think that warrants good impact or neutral? Because honestly, I'm very in between. I'll go with your call this time. I think it's a good thing that we don't have problematic perks. Yes. So that lands it in good impact, and we move on to the next one. Yes. I don't think we have many. Oh, my. One left. All things wicked, which introduce a new map, a new survivor, a new killer. Um, the Scr Grimbill Square, uh, Gothic Lady, Civil Ward, and the Unknown. You'd have to tell me about the Unknown. I've not played as the Unknown. Okay. Well, I'm just going to tell you right now. I think he is the best killer that they've ever made. Uh, okay. That I, that it's the best DLC that I remember for years. It's the most excited that I've been to play a killer since they announced, like, since I tried him. Like, it reminds me of, like, the best of other chapters, you know? Like, I I really enjoyed the gameplay when it came out, like I did with Pyramid Head. I really enjoyed how powerful he was, like I did with Oni. I really got excited when I got, when I saw the premise. Like I did with some other killers. And this killer... Oh, this killer is just so good. Th this is a killer that, let me tell you, I feel would be unbelievably easy to mess up. You know, it's like a it's like a, like a, like a math test where there's only one correct answer and like 21 ones, right? You oh, There's only one value that would make everything feel right. And I think they got so many things right with this killer. Oh, I... Really, 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 really like him. He is as strong a strong killer should be. Has a very oppressive power that puts survivors really against the wall, but also rewards survivors for thinking outside the box. 
because the, the main gimmick of this killer's power is that he can hit you through walls, right? And then you can make it bounce on things. So as a survivor, you need to loop things and sometimes think to yourself, okay, I need to not hug the wall, which is what you usually do. And okay, sometimes if the killer's gonna shoot in front of me, I need to run back at him, which is... So as a survivor, you need to do the opposite of what you do typically. Normally, when a killer injures you, you want to go away and heal in a corner and never see the killer ever again, ideally. But against this killer, right. you actually need to look at him to remove his power from you, right? So it, or, it's like, I find that so fascinating. Or for another example, if a hallucination is about to come up, then you have to think about that as well. So right. I think the unknown is actually interactive. I have to at least, you know, agree with that. Yeah, I mean, I would say he's a bit like Otis, where if he's played well, you're just going to get destroyed eventually. But it feels so good to outplay him when you manage to. And it's so meaningful as well. And he doesn't have any add-on that makes him shoot his, his gun sooner, which is very welcome. He doesn't have any add-on that makes his power super different and super OP, which is super welcome. Most of his add-ons and, and base capabilities are fairly okay. And he's not super map dependent because he said clones. At the same time, you can never teleport to a place of the map that you've never been to, right? Like you cannot, you're not like Freddy or, or Nurse where you can teleport whatever the heck you want. You you have to teleport to a place that you've been to and survivors have the risk and reward of removing your hallucinations if they choose. I find him super well designed compared to other killers and in general and incredibly fun to play as. You're making me want to try the unknown. This, this like killer is unbelievable. I can't believe you haven't played him since much or at all since release. He's incredible. Yeah. I'll give it a shot. Really yeah. quick. The map. Uh, ooh, uh, okay. <laughs> I, I can look, give my quick opinion. Uh, sorry. You, you want to go a bit? or? I like the main building. I think it's the best main building they've ever done. Unique. Uh, um unique like aesthetically yeah no that's true the, the, nice. the, the only problem with the main building is that the killer 90 percent of the times doesn't ever want to go in there because you can just ignore it yes it's, there's it was, one generator and there's pretty much not much around it yeah no the the, the 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 shape of the map encourages you heavily towards staying in the middle and maybe sometimes a little bit of the side and that's it you don't want to go to either side because it's too long these are fixable problems by the way this is one of the, like we are on a really good streak of maps where the maps aren't perfect, but they're not incredibly one-sided. They're not unbelievably killer-sided or unbelievably sword-sided. So, okay, balanced map. They need to fix a few things, and it will be pretty fine. And as you said, very unique looking, very cool looking, uh, not red and ugly. Yeah, mostly okay, not perfect, but okay. And I'm sure they'll fix it, you know. And they did collect yeah. feedback on it, and it's pretty early, and they might still fix it. So. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if in a year the map is even better. So that's awesome. I played there the other day, and I did not know there were so many filler pallets on that map. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if they're changing that, but they all, they did this thing where they put two pallets next to each other. And individually, they're weak, but when you play with both of them, it's interesting. People, yeah. I, I find that very creative, and I think that's fine. It's good that they experiment with that. Kind of like you said earlier with Hawkins, making some pallets play different. That's good. Yeah. You know, experiment with the elements of the game to make it a bit different. And now, then, you said yeah. some amazing things about the unknown, but not the perks yet. Uh, no, his perks are meh. Uh, mixed bag. Uh, they're called Unforeseen, Unbound, and, and something else. I think <laughs> haste after you hit someone and you vault a window. Yeah, that, that one's okay. just... Like all the all the issues that we said earlier about haste perks, they just they still hadn't learned that lesson, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, Take that perk. generator. Yeah. And um, what uh -huh. does it do again? It transfers your terror radius to it. That's the other one. I was actually thinking of the. I thought there was one where you had a percentage applied to it. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. That is a third perk i guess that i didn't name uh, undone do you want me to undone, like explain okay. the perk real quick or yeah sure so basically every time survivors miss skill check from healing or doing gens you gain a token the more tokens the next time you hit the gen it does a chunk of damage and it blocks it for a while very weird perk very weird perk extremely weird perk i i don't like the sound of that uh 
I don't know. Like it's a perk that it is against high levels they don't miss skill checks, and against low levels they do, but you have better options anyway. So it's like a perk right. that, yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, if, if, like this perk is not useful for anyone. For beginners, there's better perks. For advanced players, there's better perks. It's just weird. It's in a void. But the other ones are better. The, the the perk to give you haste, I think, is terrible design. I'm very weak. But the perk to transfer your terror radius to a gen, that's fun. That's gimmicky. Yeah. It leads to surprising moments, and it's useful on a variety of killers. So I think that one's okay. Uh, Sable, on the other hand, does have very kick-ass perks. Yeah. Except for one. Except for one that sucks a little. But... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I really do like Wicked. I love Wicked even. Yeah, for Wicked, the fact Wicked's that you can nasty. you can see the R of the killer. Always great information, and you can unhook yourself in the basement. Mm -hmm. Very nice as well. Mm -hmm. And and the perk to heal yourself in basement, I think it's it's fine. Yeah, I like you know? strength and shadows. That's, that's I think cool. it's solid. Yeah, cool. Uh, you can have some deeper analysis, but overall, solid perks on on the survivor side and the survivor herself is the precise archetype cute uber girl that you know is going to sell a billion cosmetics everybody loves her i yeah. swear yeah so so acceptable perks or even good perks acceptable map that might even get good and a very very good killer he might have it's early to say but he might have the syndrome of singularity and artists and other killers where because he's a bit difficult People just don't play him. But I don't think he's as difficult. I think he's a bit closer to Wesker in the sense that he's strong, but not super hard. Right? So I hope he is fairly popular. I personally really, really like him. I think he's my favorite killer that they've released in years. Like, uh, I can, I don't think I can name a killer that has been released that I like more than this one on their release. I think it's close to perfect. And I, it's kind of disappointing because I know the next killer can never top this. Pretty much. That's that's the only bad you thing. Hopeful. I mean, if they Maybe. top this killer and they make something even more fair, more fun, more well designed, then hats off to behavior. I will bow down and call them, you know, sensei master. C continue to do that, but it's gonna be hard. Very very good chapter. And there's no more chapters. So where do we place this one? I think it has. Oh man, Sable is the character that people love. Mm -hmm. I think the map's actually pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Like, overall, I can't say anything badly. Yeah. The unknown is super cool. We didn't even talk about, like, the little voice lines here and there. Oh, you yeah. Know, I, like, I presentation like and, and, and animations in the menu, the, those, I think we can all agree, are very unique and very cool, right? Yeah. I, Ots, I think you sold me. I think I think I might say uh, great After impact. this video, uh, I'm I'm gonna ask you to share your 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 camera and I'm gonna watch you play an hour of this killer. No, it really is fun. I, I highly recommend him. Yeah, I think it's great then. All right. Um, would you? I'm not sure I would place it in the great impact, just because. Really? Yeah, I know. I know. After all, I just said right. Like you remember earlier how we said that Nemesis had a lot of issues and even Wesker had a lot of issues on release, right? But it was mm -hmm. a license, and it was a massive deal, right? Okay. Now, this killer, I think on release, is may maybe the most polished, least problematic killer ever, pretty much. But it's the opposite. It's a non-license. And I don't think that they brought any other perks that they brought. Some of them are pretty game-changing, pretty good. I don't think any of them break the game or change things positively in such a way that they have a great impact. Just like Bill had borrowed time, which was a massive massive change to the quality of the gameplay i don't think this right. this chapter had any of that so sadly even though the chapter itself is beautiful i don't think it will have the long-term legacy impact of these four chapters that we put above so i would put it I on great impact on you do yeah then we downgrade to get impact and this is the final tier list looks let's, like a great list of me yeah let's put it all on screen does it fit? Yeah, this is the final tier list. Oh, man. <laughs> favorite. I fa love seeing the skull merchant just <laughs> sitting down. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Your favorite chapter uh, overall? I think I have to go with the singularity in transmission. 
very respectable pick. I, I almost agree with you that Singularity is one of the best design killers that they've made. I almost agree with you. I think it's really, really high up there. I think the best killer that they've designed in a long time is actually uh, The Unknown. And I think The Unknown is now my favorite chapter in all of DVD history. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Cope, for spending a lot of time with me and putting up of with my rants and giving your Anytime. valuable insight. I'll see you on some other call up. Thanks so much for being part of this. Any final words? Thank you, buddy. Bye bye, everyone. Hope you like my terrible opinions. Yes, you will find a link to his channel and his live streams down in the description. Go drop him a follow. Really worthwhile content. And thank you so much for watching. Bye bye. See you in the next time. Take care, everyone.